Hi, I'm Maggie. Hi, I'm Grace, and this is A Very Bookish Podcast. Hey guys, welcome back to A Very Bookish Podcast. This is episode 21. We have a very special guest with us, Literary Libra. And we are going to talk about all things from Blood and Ash and A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire and preps for The Crown of Gilded Bones. Yes, we we wanted to choose this. I wanted to choose this episode for Sam because um, we all know I choose all the episodes and what happens and who are the guests. <laughs> but I was like looking and Sam was doing your series on TikTok about it. And I was like, that's what we're going to talk about with her because she does so well with them. And I love your your analyzing of books because I don't look into it that deep but you do so then it becomes that deep for me <laughs> so I just use your experience to fuel my knowledge of books no, like, that, that like made my day <laughs> oh my gosh I mean you made our day too when you were talking about how sweet we were and stuff before so stay tuned for the bloopers after because it gets interesting there's a lot there's a lot, there's a lot. <laughs> just for YouTube how much my name I realized I, I, I have a code name here <laughs> like, okay 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 I'm in <laughs> um yeah I don't think it knows our name so I think you're okay uh to start this off um Sam do you want to kind of give uh, a little bit of background of how you got started on book talk and everything I would love to so like basic I'll, I'll give a little basic who I am um basically I I like had a different account on TikTok with my full name, which is dumb. You should never make a TikTok with your full name because then anyone can find your TikToks and it's automatically going to send it to people that know you. It's a whole thing. But I got a couple videos on there that like went um, a little like like viral because like I was doing like Spanish skits about like, you know, having like a mom who lived with a thick Spanish accent and like having being like a first gen kid or whatever. And so but I kind of got disheartened doing that just like because I was like I only had like two of those in the bag and that was it I didn't really care and then I started getting so I was on TikTok just like looking for inspiration and I found people who were making videos on a book called like Akatar. and I was like okay what is this all about and so I went to like I went I picked it up I did not like it at first and then I was hooked read the whole freaking thing it consumed me and then I was like oh my god I need to talk to people about this and on my for you page now is like filling up with Akatar stuff I was like okay okay I'm just gonna bite the bullet make a book talk and like do it because I was already trying to do that with my other page I was like making like rice and scent on candles and ish and so I think because I just got really comfortable making skits and having everyone I know see them like every like my it connected to my phone list you know what I mean so like it like was showing people on their for you pages me and so I got really comfortable really fast with just being like you know what this is who I am I'm having a lot of fun. You're judging me, then you're not my friend. And my friends never judged me. So I made a book talk account. I read these books and I was like, yo, I just want to talk to people and like make friends about these books. And like overnight, I got a lot of views on this one video. And I was like, that's so weird. That's like wild. And it was just like me just ranting. And then I was going to start up Throne of Glass. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna give my thoughts. And people started asking me, like, oh, I'm just like on like the first book. And it wasn't like a reaction video. Um, I actually didn't start making reaction videos until like partway through Crown of Crown of Midnight. Yeah. And it's because people were asking, oh my God, you know that. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> so wild. Sorry, I know the weirdest facts. You will know that like I, like everybody we interview, I always go back and like look through their content and stuff just to wrap up. But I've been oh following you since like the beginning. So that's how I know. So I'm so sorry if that was so creepy. <laughs> I love book talk. No, 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 you don't understand. That's not creepy because I love book talk. And so like, I don't really get to talk about it that often. And so people just like see me get like get books and like talk about it and like read all the time, but I don't get to talk about it in real life. So it's, it's really flattering that you knew that. And so I started making videos halfway through kind of midnight because I saw that all these people were commenting questions and like, what about this curiosities of like, what was I thinking, blah, blah, blah. And then um, at first I was like a little uncomfortable like doing that and then I just freaking loved it because I started seeing usernames that I recognized and it was I started noticing that it was like that's this is why what you said really meant a lot to me because I started seeing usernames that were like the same people in my comments on each video and I was like oh my god we're reading this together 
Does it make any sense? And then as I started going further and further and further, more people were like getting invested and asking questions on like, and, and like, and they were, and no one wanted to spoil it for me. Does it make any sense? Like everyone was so protective of me in my comments. They'd be like, Sam, there's a spoiler below or they'd comment really nicely. Everyone was so nice. Like everyone, they would be like, hey, bestie, she hasn't gotten there yet. <laughs> um, and just let me know. And so I started up that way and then halfway through I was like oh my god I never want this feeling to end like this feeling of like we read this together um why don't I do a book club and like I'll pick books that you guys want and I'll pick like the popular books on book talk like if you're coming to me I'm not gonna be reading like Tolstoy if you're coming to me I'm gonna be reading Cru Cruel Prince that was popular like two years ago but now I'm on it and I want to see what you guys like because I want to share that experience together and it's like been the best thing ever because like I don't know I, I see a lot of like my book talk friends get like a lot more followers than me over time but it doesn't bother me or anything like that because like I'm shocked every day that people follow me to begin with mm -hmm. I'm genuinely shocked every day and I get like it's the coolest thing because I feel like if you follow me, I don't really do a lot of like, I don't do like dances and I, I don't do like audios or like stuff like that. Like if I'm reading a book, all my content is going to be that book and we're just going to vibe. Like we literally are just going to vibe on it. And so you're going to, you're telling me that there are people like around the world who are like, Hey, I'm reading that too. At the same time as you, let's talk about it in the comments, like fuck everything else. That is the coolest thing ever. And so that's how I got started that's what I'm pursuing. Like the, like the feeling of like unity, like, like that sounded so gross, but like the, un the unity of like book club. And like, when I do my lives at the end of those books, it's the most fun ever. Cause we're all just sitting there like commenting, like, could you read page 144? It's my favorite. And I'll be like, okay, Ooh, let's think about this. And um, I don't know. It's dope. I'm really honored that anyone would join it. And I'm really honored that you've been watching for as long as you have, because this is my favorite thing ever. I That's love hearing all of that. You, like that was amazing. I think I think it is weird because like I I started out as like a I started I had like a TikTok for like about like nine months, almost like a year before I actually started like posting t like book talk content. I was kind of trying to get into Star Wars talk. Um, yeah. I bought a lightsaber and everything. Like I was committed, but <laughs> um, I still have the lightsaber. I still use it, but um. It was it was funny because like there were like a few like I kind of started slowly so I started like with Kate's books Mosh Trash, like just like very slowly and stuff Celine and then Grace, um that's how we met is book talk we'll we'll go into how we met and how we started reading from Blood and Ash but and you were one of like then I saw your page come up and like I was just listening to you talk. I could, I'm sorry, I could do it for hours. Like, I don't think you realize like how interesting of a person you are. And like your commentary on things is like what I want to think in my mind, but I can't. So I listen to you talk about it so that I like better understand things and you're just smarter in that kind of sense. I'm not saying like you're smarter than me and I'm not saying I'm smarter than you, but like you just have that, you're just able to like, analyze I'm so sorry just analyze it in a way that I can't kind of way yeah that's what I'm gonna say I'm not an English major I'm not I'm an accounting major okay oh, I do <laughs> yeah information after this then <laughs> <laughs> honestly like that's the whole thing about like book talk is like you honestly get so many people and that feeling of like feeling the same way over book characters it's like amazing and it brings you like so much joy because like yeah you could read a book and it could be amazing right on your own but then like as soon as you start sharing it with somebody else it gets like 10 times better it mm -hmm. just means so much more because it's just like you were there too you felt that you saw this character go through this you felt it too and like that's you know getting into deep kind of shit but it's just like that's kind of what we look for as like people you know we, we look to connect to people we look to feel the same things and book talk did that for us in the best way May I just say, both of you were very eloquent in this last moment, but like that particular thing that you were just mentioning, I was talking about that with my roommate today. <coughs> Cause like, I don't know, I don't know your age, I don't know how old you guys are, but like 
like go back to like unless this is that moment let me speak english actually you know um how there was like um when i was in high school middle school books were my personality trait does it make any sense so i don't know if that's what at the same as age Holly? Oh. okay i'm 25 I'm turning 25 in a, like a couple of weeks. Okay, okay, so we're saying bracket, bracket of age. Okay, okay, okay. So like, you know, that was me, middle school, high, oh, 22? Yeah, you're 20? 20? 20? 20? I, I just turned 20 in February. Yeah. Oh, you're a baby, baby. Oh, please. Enjoy it. I mean, what am I saying as if I'm 57 years old? Like, Hey, 25 is a huge jump from 20 so yeah. I mean Grace has a house I am living in a dorm room so there's a big difference between the two of us <laughs> but I'm in LA so Grace gets it <laughs> like no no wonder she's got four roommates but like but like okay like if you if you go back to like the time period where like that was like your main personality trait especially like at the age that I'm thinking it was for you I didn't have anyone to vibe with people read but it was like a thing that I would do by myself you and didn't talk with each other. You, you yes. read, but you didn't talk about it. Like yeah. I was, I was definitely an avid reader and like late elementary, early middle school and stuff. I was reading a ton, but I never had anybody to like talk with because like, it never was like a, there was never like a platform for you to talk with. And like, I can guess there was like MySpace and Tumblr, but I like never was technologically well, into yeah. that. So even then, like Tumblr is more like the images. Yeah. It was more like aesthetic, like books. Like, we love Girl, books and aesthetic. You're pulling out those images from my mind. Oh. Well, I always ask people when I meet them for the first time. I'm like, what was your um, what was your um, what was your super specific subgenre of Tumblr in 2014? <laughs> Like literally every time I like think of like Tumblr and like books back then, I think of like <laughs> John Green, John Green, Divergent, like Twilight, Hunger that Games, was, Hunger Games. That was the ish, okay? Oh my and then, like, because like my freshman, I, I said the story on this podcast before, but I'm gonna say it again for Sam. Like my freshman year, my teacher was dope. She decided for the whole ninth grade um, class, like the, our year, we would read Hunger Games for school. And so we read Hunger Games as part of like our like unit and everything. And my whole grade, ninth grade, everybody loved it and kept reading the whole, the next books. And our teacher like instilled this like thing about reading and loving reading throughout. Uh, people jumped into it like you said everybody kind of felt that at one point but then people fell off I didn't at the time I kept kind of going with it but Hunger Games Divergent the oh you know what I'm talking about those clouds okay okay it's just like ingrained in my mind to the point where <laughs> cringe calling myself out at one point I did this um image combining all of the symbols in one and where is it where I is think, it i think it's still tagged on my instagram on my book oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just really direct eyes dead I'm it, 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 was like, <laughs> it was like the mockingjay arrow inside of like the shadow hunter mortal instrument symbol <laughs> with the harry potter like hawkraxes and like um a couple of other like the divergent symbols and like the allegiant and like all, all of these things merge into one huge symbol i remember drawing that in the middle of high school like class i was like in the middle of like history class and i drew all of the symbols together and i was just like oh, this is totally it looking back at it now i'm like oh, God. no 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 don't do that don't make that an ick that's not an ick at all can i can i ask you a, fo a follow-up to that no i've been interviewing you guys <laughs> Let's just do both of you. Um, question to you guys. Do you, well, this is like kind of the answer is in is in this meeting right now. It's so funny. I feel like when I'm on book talk and I'm meeting friends off of book talk and we start like vibing on our past and they start describing like the book nerd that they were in their past or like just the person they were in high school. All I think to myself in my head is like, we would have been friends in high school. Oh my gosh, don't even say that because we would have been so... That would have been like, if I looked over to the left and some girl was doing that, I'd have been like, mm. 
We're boys. <laughs> Maggie, Maggie, we're, 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 blah, 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 blah. what was yours? You know what I mean? Like, what was your thing in high school? So my my thing in high school was like for the first two years of high school, I did not have a thing. I like so I I went to two different high schools. I moved in the middle of my sophomore year. Worst decision ever. I moved high. I moved states. Um, oh, winter of sophomore year. So like I knew I was moving, so I didn't get attached or anything. But then like, so I was like I was a I was band nerd. I was in marching band. <gasps> my love. What instrument? What instrument? I, I was not an instrument. I was in color guard, and I did winter guard. That's, so that's that's what I did. That's dope. Okay, that's what. <laughs> well, I was in the theater. I I would walk mm. around with like my thespian six three six two like jacket on, like about to get bullied by someone with like my books in my hands. Like I was that person. I I um. Yeah, I was that person. I like hung out with the anime club, but I also just kind of like floated, if that makes any sense. I don't know. Yeah. My vibe. Okay. I I definitely like I when I was in high school, when I moved when I moved to uh, Kansas, when I went to high school in Kansas, my second high school, I read a lot of like royalty and like royal books about like, anything with royal anything. So princesses princes kings and queens that's all i would read was it like historical fiction like historical yeah it was like historical fiction also check your instagram real quick there's a surprise i just dm'd you from the podcast instagram there's a beautiful photo (gasps) it actually is so good though it actually is so good (laughs) it's so good it was on your personal account and i just like looked through your tag photos and i found it I was like ah, it's so good <laughs> that's why i was quiet for a while i was just like i whenever i'm like <laughs> looking down or looking away i'm always looking up something that grace grace are you okay but it's funny because when you were quiet i was like maggie where'd you go <laughs> like in my heart no, no. We stop this you were amazing we own the things we're good at oh we my gosh. Own- things we're good at that's why I was like smiling a little bit when I was looking down because I was scared Grace was gonna notice because whenever I'm like looking away a lot of people think I'm like not paying attention but I'm actually like researching like what I'm gonna say next or like something that they said I'm like looking through their accounts or something and I'm like when it's someone's pod I'm sorry Grace I'm sorry oh, you go, go ahead <laughs> I was gonna say when it's someone's podcast I always assume that they like because I'm that way like when I like have my lives on Instagram or I'm just like drinking with like people like I'll I have to write everything out prior you know what I mean so like I I'm the same way you don't even worry about it but Grace how are you <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine I'm really good. it's okay it's it's great at first I thought it was on like a human skin or something I didn't understand where it was and then I realized it's like it was prime Instagram filter time yeah I, filter. I looking back on my instagram i have the like my like childhood instagram i it was like mark kansas was the name and it's like the most cringiest thing I've, the filters like the first generation of instagram oh my gosh i had like two likes and i thought i was the shit <laughs> <laughs> but like same <laughs> um so kind of to get this moving forward how did you how were you introduced to blood and ash because um we'll explain how we were introduced but how were you was it through tiktok is how you got blood and ash this is a great question so book talk threw it at me basically this is what happened i was finishing up throne of glass i like announced that i wanted to continue on as a book club what book would you want to read and i gave like an uh, like examples of books that were on the list first my flooded my comment section with From Blood and Ash. Second, it was my first book that anyone had ever sent me. Back to back, two separate people. Se- I remember that. I remember that video. No, it wasn't funny. No. Uh, I was okay. gonna send it. I was gonna send it to you. But then I saw that you had got it and I was like, dang it, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I was like, wait a minute, was it one of you guys? Why? <laughs> why am I like like I blank? definitely was thinking back I was like thinking because I like had I changed my username in like December so I was like wait did I I was like 
No, I did. But that, I thought about it too. I think, I think I, I, no, I like realized afterwards. I was like, no, I, I made the person that sent it to me like fit, like arts, like a cat late. And I sent it to her. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I do that. Like for anyone who's ever sent me anything, because here's how I think about it. This is also, this is a segue, but it's to explain like people like, that's so nice of you, right? That's so nice of you that you like thought of me and you were like, here is this book. It brought me joy. I want to bring you joy. Now I, I cannot give everyone that's ever given me a book, a book <laughs> back because I would be bankrupt. Um, and all my money goes into my films. So I was like, but I felt shitty about that. So I was like, well, I need to do something. I want to do something. And then it occurred to me, I was like, why don't I do something that's like personal for me to that person and we can share this together. And so it's not just like, oh, thanks. It's like, no, I thought about you the entire time I was reading this and I, I like highlighted things and I wanted to make something that you would actually like, like to keep type of a thing. And so, yeah, I sent, she was my first person I ever sent it to. And that wasn't, yeah, I think she's in Texas. Oh, it wasn't you. It wasn't you. <laughs> well, like, I went through the whole thing, but yes, it was sent to me. And then the next one was sent to me and I was like, okay, fuck it, book club. <laughs> what are we doing about Blood and Ash? What so about you guys? Did you get the like exclusive editions from like Fairy Lou or the Bookish Box? Did you get any of those? No, and I'll like, um, <clears throat> this is, here's the thing. For, um, no, because A, I'm making, working on a thesis. So like mm -hmm. anything that was like excessive, mm -hmm. it, like to me, I was like, I can't, I, I can't do that right now. Mm -hmm. um, and second of all, it's not a five star for me oh okay i wouldn't like spend you wouldn't, my yeah i mean, you know I mean? yeah it was I, gorgeous oh my yeah. god yeah no i i i was looking at comments one time and they were like oh i didn't really like it and i was like a lot of people like i think that's a lot of like people struggle on like book talk and stuff is like people don't understand that you don't have to like a certain book that somebody's recommending you like you don't have to one like we have there's so many different tastes and stuff like right now i'm not reading ya i'm reading smutty romance books because i'm not looking for the plot i am purely reading it for the sex i will not admit this to my parents but i admitted it to the desk receptionist of my residence hall and i told him straight up i was like dude like you think i read for like the plot no this book is all about sex <laughs> Well, that's how I felt. That's how I feel about from like, like, let me just like clear my name real quick. I love this book. I love it, love it, love it. But I am reading this for the fucking. <laughs> I'm reading this for that scene in the Black Forest where he's like, let me hug you sleep. I'm reading it for that scene. I don't like, you know what I mean? Oh, God. <laughs> we'll get into the plot and stuff, but Grace, do you want to introduce how we got into From Blood no. Before we jump into all the the smut, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I picked up from Blood and Ash because I saw it like a few times. I'm very a visual person, so like anytime I see a cover, I'll remember the cover and then know to get it. I don't care what it's about. I saw the cover, I'm like, okay, I'll get it. So I got the cover. Didn't know anything about it besides Maiden falls in love with guard. That's it. And it, that's it. That's all I knew. So I got it. I read it and you know I took my time with it I usually take about like I spend a week on every book like I can probably finish it in a couple of days but I spend a week to like feel it and soak it in and you know and so as I was reading the book it became such a surprise to me because of things that happened in the book and at the age that I fell in love with reading and because it had those few little things in there I was like oh my gosh I haven't felt this way about a book in so long since like Akatar like surprised me because I was like I knew nothing about it and so this was the same thing I got that feeling of not knowing anything about a book and I fell in love with it and then as soon as I finished it and how it ended I'm just like oh my gosh I opened up Snapchat told Maggie Maggie you need to get this book you need to read this book oh my gosh it's so good you'll like love it it's like perfect it has spice it has enemies to lovers read it mm -hmm. literally like two minutes later she responds back to me i just bought both of them off of amazon i was like i was laying in bed i was in my i was in my bed like just i was literally just reading another book and she was like snapchatting me all of this and i like looked at it i was like oh this looks interesting and i just like swiped up went to went to amazon and like pre-ordered uh the first the second book and then bought 
from Blood and Ash. <laughs> Can I just say, that is such classy friendship. If I recommend you something and your response is to like buy it right off the bat right there, not even look into it, that is classy. What do you think is classy? <laughs> like book etiquette. Yeah, we knew each other for about like a month and a half at this time too. So like we hadn't, like we weren't as close as we are now but I still like trusted her and I was like okay I'll read it and Grace do you want to tell what happened when I started reading okay. so then she gets the book right hold on where where's my copy it's, not, it's under my computer Oops. It's the book and she shows it to me she goes like this is a thick boy like I don't know if I can finish this and at the time she was reading Crush by Tracy Wolf and then she's just like I don't know if I'll, I'll finish it after uh I'll start it, but I'm probably not going to finish it right now. I'm like, that's totally fine. Just like, let me know your updates. 12 hours later, she's just like, I'm already like this far into the book. I only have so much left. I think I'm going to finish this right now. And she was heading off to work, finished it at work. No. Yeah. So I started at work the night before I started it at work. And then I went to bed and then had my school day and then went to work and read it and at work and then I was walking back to back to my dorm and I like was texting her about it and I was like uh, like spoiler alert for the whole series but I was like I was like oh Castillo is interesting he's not human um he's the dark one and I was like you mean Hawk is interesting at that point you're like Hawk is interesting he's definitely the dark one and I'm like what really you think so why why do you think so (laughs) and I gave her like details I was like well this is interesting that he was faster on the rise like I was like he doesn't really care about any like of the human norms and stuff he's always like I don't give a shit and I'm like that's interesting like that's not what a guard would normally say Mm -hmm. and I was like he's the dark one and she was like how would you guess that and then like I finished it like an hour and a half later and I was like I "I didn't know what to do (laughs) wait so you binge read all of From Blood and Ash in like a 24 hour period. I probably read it in about nine hours. Holy wow. Y'all, right? you you are the type of reader that I genuinely cannot wrap my mind around. It's insane. It's like, it's like watching a gymnast like land perfectly and you're like, how the fuck did they do that? I got no idea. I love to watch it. Like, <laughs> like Kingdom of Ash, I read in a day. Oh my god! I, my, it took me a month to read Addie LaRue. Okay, the end of the month for me on Book Talk is fucking hilarious because I see all my friends like Jenna Lipix and Pauline. I'll see them like post their like monthly wrap ups, and I'm dying because I read like two books. I'm like, it's okay. Grace hasn't read anything in the month of March, it. so it's okay. To be fair, I haven't read anything this past month. Because, like, I made the mistake of, like, doing, like, a character aesthetic sexy video for Cassian and oh. and for, <laughs> for Hawk, for the dark one. No, 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 for Castile, for Castile. And it's, like, these, it's a sound and it's, like, all these pictures and then it it's, like, a pause, pause and, it, and I put in a gif, like, a sexy makeout gif. And then it went back again and then another gif. I'll send it to you to see it. So I made two of them. And then like, people were like, oh, do this character, do this character. And I'm like, okay. But like, I, to do these videos, total segue from what we're talking about, but to do these videos, I have to like look through Pinterest and then like pull off of Google. Like I'm doing deep dive. There's a lot of effort into them. Like if you look at each video and you know those characters, you'll see little things that you would only know if you read the book. Yeah. And she'll, she'll send me them too. She sends me them. She's like, which one should I put in there? So like every single video that she's done, I've seen like the background and like, she's like, which, which pictures do I choose and stuff? We always do this. So that's how, you know, like we have a true friendship is like, we both send each other's like our TikToks. Like she's gone the route of like characters and stuff. And then I've gone the route of pure smut sex. Yeah. So because That's of that, I just have a- what my page is about. Yeah, I have a series on my page, and it's books that made me blush. But it's the it's like the emoji that's like the red, the like. I know, I know that. And so, that's where I've gone with my career. Well, I'm gonna stalk you both. 
um, I've seen Grace's videos pop up on my For You page. I'm barely certain for one for one of them. And I was like, oh goodness. So I see, that's the thing that's wild with the algorithm, right? That's the thing that's like so wild. I've noticed that like, this is like a two part question I'd like to ask both of you now that I, now that I see kind of like your aesthetics of like where it's going. Um, it's so interesting. It's like, once you've done something and it gets pop, it gets like um, popularity or something, that's what people kind of want from you at that point. And so you try to do something else. Like, like I noticed that like, like I try, like every once in a freaking blue moon, I'll do one of the audio videos, like the ones with like an audio or something. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, am okay. I just I'm wrong? Okay, okay, okay. Um, and it's just not really my thing. And so I'll do it because I'll be like, damn, I feel like people want these. People like doing these things. Like people like seeing these things. And like, those are the videos that don't really get a lot of views from you, which is funny. But then my videos where I'm like talking about something, that's what people see. And I'm like, that's so, that's so funny. And like, so and this is my two part question to you. So it's that was more like a response to that. Like, yeah, once TikTok tells you what they want from you, it's like, that's where you're yeah. going. And then my two part is, do you ever feel like, especially just because you're telling me you put so much effort, do you ever feel like, um, does it ever like get to you in your head? Cause like people are looking at your page, um, like, oh, is this video like the quality of something I would like to put out? Is this like a good video or is this like filler? Cause I, I think about that stuff all the time. And that's sometimes why like, I'll take like three days where I like, don't post and people are like, what happened to you? And I'm like, it's cause I'm in my head and I'm afraid that like, I'm gonna post something that's just a post and it's not like good. Does it make any sense? Oh gosh, it makes total sense because like literally I posted the first one simply because I, I wanted to make Cassian's video. And I was like, I need to do it. I mean, he is my number one, like, I went, the character that I realized that's my type that's who I was drawn to so I was like he's who I look for in every single book therefore I fell in love with with Cass with um uh, with Hawk Hawk, Hawk Cass anyways and so Cass squared. Then, Cass squared. that's what we call it Cass squared merch it. dropping soon <laughs> it's Castile and Cassian both of them together and so like when I made their videos, I was just like, man, I'm making this video simply so I can have it on my page so I can go back to look at it because that is what I love. And then people started requesting and then I was just like, okay, okay, I'll do them. And then I did like a few for Maggie and for Eamon because they both wanted Azrael and Dorian. So I did them and Rowan. And then after that, <laughs> After that, I started doing a couple others, but then I would always be like, oh, this isn't good. I, I shouldn't post this one. This one's not, it doesn't feel like them and people are not gonna like it. I, I Let me hold off. And so there have been gaps where I just have not posted in like- This feels so good. <laughs> girl, we feel it, we feel it. This so, feels so good. Not, the you, not the you having panic situation of it, but like the camaraderie. Cause again, like I don't talk to people every day who A, are on book talk, B, post a book talk so they will understand like my stress when I'm like not stressed but like my like double thinking of like like I'll, I'll like I'll record a rec I'll record a reaction as I'm doing it like I try to do them raw um but then I'll be like well this is my raw reaction but I feel like it's kind of garbage like it was just kind of me going <gasps> like oh my fuck <laughs> like I don't know what the fuck just happened <laughs> I need to take a step away like yeah I guess like I'm reading Throne of Glass right now. Well, not right now because I haven't. For the first time? For the first time ever. Thank God that you said that now. Well, I wasn't going to do yeah. that. Because I got it, you know. Um, <laughs> and so right now I am doing um, the tandem read. So I'm reading uh, Empire of Storms and Tower of Dawn at the same time. I'm only like chapter eight on Empire of Storm and chapter three of Tower of Dawn. Haven't touched them in a while because it's busy, but I did reactions for Air of Fire and Crown of Midnight. No, no, no. Air of Fire. Did I do Crown of Midnight? Queen of Shadows. Queen of Shadows. There you go. Thank I you. Love you for like being like, nope, nope, bestie. You'll, you'll like notice that, that I'll like correct her on like her own stuff. I'm like, no, it was this month. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, wait, how do you know that? <laughs> She literally shares half of my brain. It's it's what we say all the it's, time. Yeah, we do. But like to do those reactions, I was just like, dude, like nobody's gonna care what I think. And I was just like, you know what? 
whatever. This is my first time ever. I need to document this so I can look back on it too. And so I have, I did air fire. I felt number one, I felt like I, there were too many parts to it, but it was a big, there's so much to say. And so I'm like, do I leave that part in there? Do I take it out? So kudos to you because you do this. That's your thing. I tried and it's, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. <laughs> hey, um, may I just say, it is a struggle. People do care about what you think. Um, I won't mention anything about the books, but I am really happy you're doing the tandem read. But I think it, one thing I will say is really cool uh, about like, I started off, I started off doing reactions reading Throwing Glass, right? And it's like the coolest fucking thing ever whenever I see people doing reactions of Throne of Glass, because I'm always like, oh, I wonder if we vibed, you know what I mean? I wonder if like, if we're on the same wavelength of certain chapters and characters, because I'm, I'm, I'm watching it live with my roommate. My roommate's doing the tandem read, like you. And I love when like, um, I'll get like, I don't know, I'll get tagged by people that are like, I'm doing this, blah, 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 blah. And I'll be like, oh, that's so cool. So what I'm trying to say is like, never think that no one gives a shit what you think. Everyone gives a shit what you think. And I bet 100% that you are going to have an authentic viewpoint on it. And regardless of anything, the whole point is to talk, book talk. And so I think it's really fucking cool that you're like doing that. So yeah. Oh, thanks. I'm going to get right back on it. See, yeah. I'm the opposite. <laughs> I shit post. I shit post every day. So fucking like anal if you're over here. Like, I'm sorry. I, I was composing myself like when you first asked that I just started laughing because I shit post but the thing is that's why people follow me is because I shit post like I have a video that I just put up the like yesterday and it's like me it's like I do this for my squad I do this for like that and it's me and it, the caption is me reading four plus smutty romances weekly to please the kinky side of t book talk and that's the kind of content i put out there like my <laughs> con wait continue yes 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 yes, yes. I was i'm gonna say people do not i mean i i do get asked like like my um my fulton you and like my off campus like those are like popular like smutty reads on book talk like people enjoy like me right like my reviews of them and stuff but like people really come to me to just see what smutty romances I read like they don't even want to know about it they're just like which ones are you reading show us the covers and then like half of the comments are talking about like why are the covers so dirty <laughs> like that's, well that's okay. if you gotta ask walk away quite frankly but that's your niche and that's what's so cool like yeah. is like finding that and like yeah yeah that's dope dude yeah I try to post like every day and I do post every single day hard yeah. well because like graces is a lot more I, I i i literally will film like 10 tiktoks in like a 30 minute period because <laughs> i shit post so i will save audios and i'm like okay this is what i'm gonna do with it and then like i like get uh, get ready like i'll do it at night and then i like i go to classes and then i like get ready at like 2 p.m for my actual day starting and then i'll like from like three from like two three to like five six p.m is like my time for like content so i film like for tiktoks i take photos by my window and stuff for my bookstagram and then i'm doing podcast stuff but like he's on it like <laughs> i was gonna say the fuck do you go off you know what so, I mean? that's what i do with my life <laughs> i mean you're productive as fuck so congrats <laughs> like i don't even know how i don't know how he's the youngest of us <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that but yes I I think it comes with my anxiety that I like can't focus on my schoolwork so like I have to have that break and my break is bookstagram and book talk and like creating content and stuff that's like my break from reality oh, <laughs> so, felt that it allows me to cool down from like my <laughs> my um stress of school let's just say oh. it's very interesting but since we've kind of just talked, it's time to move on to, are you okay? It's been a while, we're getting, now we're gonna get actual to what we were gonna talk about during this podcast, the book. <laughs> These books are so thick. Like the paper, like I got the Fairy Loot and the um, Bookish Box editions of these. And I'm like, how was it? 
books was that the one that was like a painting almost like comic book style looking? yeah that was the like line art kind of thing but like these are so and the third book's gonna be even bigger the third book is a little bit longer than this one. Oh, that's right you're not on the facebook page so you yeah kinda... Been... sorry it sounded like I just farted that was the book <laughs> yeah. hear back. okay well just in case anybody did but yeah so like these are like really thick and that's why when I first read from blood and ash I was like oh she's a thick boy but like I wasn't too intimidated because I read like I read crescent city I read kingdom of ash I've read I read the whole throne of glass series in a week so <laughs> Yeah, whenever I tell people that, they're always like, but I was reading from like 1 p.m. to like 4 or 5 a.m. So I would not stop. I'd stop for like, for like dinner. That's it. That's good though. <laughs> so um, are there any particular scenes, not smutty scenes, but just regular scenes in From Blood and Ash that you like, you think are like, critical to the book so like yeah there's like there's like there's like those in-between scenes and stuff but and there's also the smutty scenes but there's not as much as in kingdom of flesh but at the end yes but are there scenes that like if you didn't have it in the book you wouldn't like the book are there's um, those scenes which scenes are those <laughs> um specifically the night that the big like chaos happens and the duke dies right duke. before that she says to her like father figure gentleman, um, it's been a couple months, so that's why I'm not like, but she says to him, like she calls him out and she says to him, like, basically he never helped her. He yeah. knows what's going on with her, that she's constantly getting abused. The only time she actually says like, not the word abuse, but like she's being abused by the Duke. Um, and it's the only time in the whole book that she's a monologue where she like just confronts it and she calls this man out for his bullshit because he's like, I'm protecting you, I'm protecting you. What the fuck yeah. protecting me? And then the next scene that happens, but if that if that did you not can occur, spoil it, you can spoil it. This is a whole spoiler like episode. You don't have to hold yourself back when talking about it. Basically, yeah. like he dies in the next one. And like, yeah. and to be honest, if that did not occur, if she did not because personally for me, I did not give a fuck when he died because um that's just me. Care. Thank yeah. you. I didn't give a fuck. You did not help her. <laughs> you let this girl get abused for her whole life. And you were never her father figure. You know what I mean? Like, no, no, no. I did not give a fuck. But that was my favorite scene. And um, I think that's like top tier for me. That and then obviously, and I would say like because of that, the lead up of the actual scene of the abuse, mainly because not, I don't, I didn't like the victim porn, but I didn't think it was. I think what it was, was a very adult scene done in a very short concise way but not shying away from the subject because one of my things that I think is very weird when it comes to talk when, when people talk about abuse in books is that they either hint at it hint at it hint at it and then people like the readers are like what the fuck you just kind of said blanket statement that they have this in their past but you never talked about it you never, we never actually it. see it we never exactly. see it. we never read about it or like see them what are they processing you know what I mean like what happened or that's the thing and then they, 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 they like basically make it victim porn and that's gross I feel like it was one scene saw just what we needed to see then she confronts it I was like fuck yeah she takes ownership of what happened yeah and then what happens next she kills that motherfucker she kills that man oh yeah oh <laughs> That's me. It was like a, like, it was, it was, I think it was so crucial for victim is like the victim taking it back and allowing the victim to be mad and allowing the victim that retribution that she deserved. She fully deserved. And the fact that I don't even remember his name because he wasn't that, I don't even remember what his name was. I know it was Lord oh my god was, the, was the, her the, trainer her i forgot his name that's because he didn't i didn't like him he was so hypocritical he uh, was the, why do i say victor in my brain victor, victor. Was dad yeah yes that's who we're talking about victor victor was that um the guy who she killed i can't remember that's lord, lord 
No, Lord Mazakine was like the other weird guy. No, that was it. No, it was Lord Mazakine. Yeah, and the Duke dies. Okay. Yeah, the Duke is the Duke is killed by Hawk. Yes. Hawk kills the Duke by impaling him, and then she kills Lord Maz. Maz which Mazine? I don't Mazine. No, no, I'm pronouncing it wrong. I know I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't remember it because, like, I didn't. I Wait, think Mazine. Mazine. I think it is Mazine. It's M A Z E E N. Oh. And Victor. I, I'm a big fan of audiobooks. I love audiobooks. So oh, gr- here's a fun that- thing. So Grace, no, I'm gonna tell the story. I I get to tell the story because Grace made me wait till November to read this book because the audiobook came out in November. So I waited till November to read this book, and of course, oh sorry, I hit my computer. Like I am, I sped through it because. I'm not going to take five days to read this. Grace, five days to read it. And we're like planning our book together and stuff. And we're like writing and stuff. And I was like, oh, we could do like a fake, like a arranged marriage like JLA does. And she was like, what? Who? She was like, she was like, what? Like who, Maggie? And I was like, I was like, did I say JLA? And she's like, yes. And I was like, maybe I was thinking of somebody else. She tried so hard to like. I did it though. I did. I I convinced you. I convinced her that I was thinking of another book because I was I had read multiple books between that and talking to her. Now, so. did you convince her, or did Grace just really, really, really not want to get spoiled, and so she convinced herself? I think it was both. I think I did a really good job because like I had read multiple books between, so it um, covered my ass. So like. <laughs> Cause like we were, we were talking about this and I'm just like, like what Maggie, like, 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 like who? Cause I know the only book that we're reading together at the same time is this book. So, and I'm not there yet. You know, I'm not there. So then she did that and I'm just like, mm-hmm, okay, okay. And so I did this thing in my mind, which I don't know if it's part of like my neurodivergent mind that I just kept saying that doesn't happen in the book. It's not going to happen in the book. It's not going to happen. I do that shit. Dude. And you know, what's crazy is that I've had to do this recently maggie i haven't told you yet because i don't want you to get mad at people but i recently had to do this because of something that i think possibly happens in throne of glass and it's something about someone where they find out someone is something to them but they're not sure and i'm not going to look at the camera because i don't want to look at your guys' faces i'm straight up looking at you and (laughs) i'm keeping a straight face I'm actually yeah. looking away from the camera to look into comments. I think, I think maybe you got it. You meant, I think you might have read that wrong. To be clear. I might have read it wrong. And so that's what I'm telling myself. That's not true. That's not happening because I already know that this happened to them years ago. So they can't have another one. So it wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't make sense. Absolutely. It wouldn't make sense. So then I am literally telling myself all the time, all the time. Yeah. Sometimes you'll read a comment by accident and then like, it's fake. It's a lie. Total lie. Total lie. I will say I spoiled the Hawk Castile thing for myself because I was on my For You page. Here's the thing. That's why someone commented recently on one of my videos. They like, no, they didn't comment. What it was, was they made a video where they tagged me and they had said that I made a video about um, Shadow and Bone, but I did it, but like it was a spoiler and they didn't realize it was a spoiler. And they basically said that like I spoiled it for them. And I was kind of confused because I was like, every single video I've ever made is like covered in spoiler warnings. Like I'm like, homie, I don't think that was me. And then they immediately were like, no, that was that was them. That was them. That was that wasn't me. And I was like, good, yeah, because like the thing is, I get really annoyed with the no spoiler warning stuff because like I got spoiled I'm sorry I'm trying to figure out my lighting I got spoiled for Hawk and Castile because I saw a video of like all of our book boyfriends or whatever the fuck and it had Hawk slash Castile over his art and I was like damn it <laughs> if it's a plot twist, dude if it's a plot twist not even just like a little factoid 
you got a spoiler warning. <laughs> like, like, like I, when I did my character video for him, like I asked everybody. I, I knew. said it in the comments too. I wrote it in the comments. I was like, she is not finished with the series. Do not spoil it for her. I will come for you. Every single one of her videos that she was posting, I was posting underneath it too. I was like, if you spoil it for her, I will come for you. That's a, that's a good friend. I, I love like Throne of Glass is like my series. So I'm like, I want her to experience it without being spoiled. And our, she's gotten a lot of spoilers for it. I feel like. Yeah. But especially like, cause I did like a, I did a crying video for Sam, even though everybody knows because that's how the series starts. It starts with him gone. And so like, it's not a spoiler, but when I got there, cause I was reading um, the Assassin's Blade and I, read it and i read that scene wait wait, wait. Uh, careful because like what if no one what if people are watching this and they don't know oh spoiler alert for throne of glass there it is, there it is. like a minute ahead Skip yes. a minute. i was like we cannot be calling people out for not doing spoilers <laughs> and then we fucking spoil throne of glass ready, ready? i'm gonna put a, i'm gonna put a timer up and you can say it and we're gonna have it on live and then i'm gonna turn it off when people can just mute this right now ready set go so like I have a whole video of like me in a blanket and like Sam's picture in the background and I'm like sobbing, sobbing, sobbing. And like there's this song playing and then I'm just crying. And I'm like, I knew that this was gonna happen and I still let myself feel and fall in love with him. Why did I do this? And I'm crying and then like the whole comments are just like, oh, and then this scene in Queen of Shadows and then in this scene and then the shirt and then this and then that. And I'm like, so I'm not looking at that. I didn't see that. My mind did not read that. I did not see this. And then I go to my private snap story and I'm telling him like, dude, I'm getting so many videos about this. So I'm just like, mm -mm, we're not doing this no more. I will say one of my, my, my biggest flexes for myself, like as a friend, as a person, my, my roommate and my best friend, my roommate is my best friend. She is reading front of glass, right? She's not on book talk she doesn't watch my video she's not like she's now watching my videos because she started throwing a glass but i curated how she's reading it right now like i obsessively because i have i have this thing where it's like if you already know spoilers then start with throwing a glass if you don't know anything like if you like truly are unaware of anything that happens in this series, I think you just start with the Assassin's Blade. And so she did. And so I saw her watch, like read it pure, everything fresh. Now she's doing tandem read. And like, basically my biggest flex as like a book talker who has friends who are not on book talk is that I did not spoil that bitch. <laughs> yeah, no, I, fresh, okay. Like I will come for you. <laughs> like. Yeah, I thankfully was not all fully on book talk yet when I read Throne of Glass. I saw it and I was like, I'll just check it out. And I read it, the first book, and I immediately got the next book through my library and stuff. And I got zero spoilers for it. I had no idea what I was reading. We all know the series doesn't start until Era of Fire. And when I read Era of Fire, I tell you, I was, I was literally in my grandma's living room on my air mattress bawling my eyes out at 4 a.m in the morning that was how i read air of fire I, I will say just a vibe real quick on that though i spent so when i was reading for blood and ash just like just like to vibe off of just like reading at your grandma's house when i was reading for blood and ash you know there's a lot of like build up in the first book to like the smut scenes so my grandma hits me up she like lives down the hall from me and she's in her own apartment so she hits me up she's like do you want to have a sleepover tonight and i was like yeah sure let's do it and so i go over to her house we have dinner together i'm like laying on her bed reading she's watching a novella in the other room you know the huge and so she comes over to like we're like you know we're, like we're just like chilling watching tv on the laying on the bed like she's watching tv whatever and i get to a scene which scene which scene i get to the, the 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 blood forest i get to the 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 the, 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 the blood forest scene. and i i'm like i did this i swear on my fucking life there's video evidence on my page i i was like on the bed i go i need to go to the restroom and she's like okay dividing so weird and i'm like <laughs> my grandma's fucking bathroom and every other five minutes i'm like keep going back and forth back and forth <laughs> and i'm just like 
not like oh it was so ridiculous and my grandma was like not even biting an eye she's like whatever like, you know exactly the video you're talking about because I was just like I feel this so much <laughs> see I read that scene straight faced <laughs> right next to my roommate I have that power <laughs> Yeah, but like here's the thing that kills the vibe I'll it be does honest. yeah well I got nothing against my grandma I got nothing against your roommate yeah. but like listen I'm not reading this for the moral ethics of what it's going to change in my life I'm reading this to disappear okay I'm reading it for me I don't need you around <laughs> so like I definitely can block people from my life. I can just like block them out so that I'm able to do that. That's how I can read so fast is because I can just block out the rest of the world and just zoom through a book. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So, what question to you? Because I don't think you, you answered the question you asked me. What was the scene for you that if it didn't oh. exist, you would be like, oh. I'm done, I'm out. Oh, out. the rise. If the rise didn't exist, if that scene did not exist, I would probably have not finished the, like that made it so, that, that scene is what, why I started questioning who Hawk was and mm -hmm. I also saw the tension between the two of them and I was like okay something's gonna happen between the two of them but I that's when I was like getting very suspicious I was like how did he get there so fast he's not human I like texted Grace and I was like he's not human what is he what? and then I was like is he Atlantean I like said that to her I texted her I was like he is he has to be and she's like what no and I was like he is that's brilliant i love that like to kind of go back to what i was saying about the videos because of this because of that conversation about us trying to like figure out who he was early on in the book and i did a video for him like how i'm doing them now and i was just like who do i make this video off of do i make it off of hawk or do i make it off of Cass? If I make it off of Cass, then I can do more because if you know who Cass is, you know. And so I was just like, I'm gonna do it off of Cass. And the way that I do the video is that I'm doing presenting and then their title. So like for Reese, it's like the High Lord of the Night Court for like, um, for Dorian, the Prince of Dornell, right? And so it has their title. So then I'm just like, I can't do that for Hawk. So I did Wait, it for- Wait, who did you just say Dorian was the Prince of? No, did I say Dorian? I meant Rowan. My okay, bad. I was about to say, I was like, you, man, you're I'm not. Not. I was trying to go too fast. I was trying to go too fast. So when I did Cass's, I did the dark one because that's what he's called. And I swear, I was just like, we know the name of the dark one, his real name, like in the first four chapters of the it's book. It's Castile Denier. We know that the dark one is Castile Denier. We had a chat with Eamon and Melissa and we were like, it pretty sure it's not a spoiler and we even asked in the facebook group chat you asked and everybody yeah. was like it's not it's a spoiler if you put hawk slash castile that's the spoiler, that's the spoiler. yeah and so i was just like so i usually do like their title and then in the captions their name their full name with the book that they're from so like if for reese it was like the high lord of the night court and then resand from Akatar series right and then so when I was doing his, I'm just like, do I call him that? Is that a spoiler? I was double second guessing, but then because I knew, I was just like, great, because our friend, we've gotten our whole book club, because we also run a book club, and we've gotten our whole book club to read this book, because we we're going to read the third one together, and one of our friends, she looked up fan art, and she's like, I think I spoiled it for myself. And but I'm it's just, not on you. That is it, not on you. Was that Malia? Malia. She looked yeah. up fan art and then she saw it and then it was just hawk castile denier and i was just like girl don't do that you need fan art come to me i got yeah. you you don't need to do that and so we started sending it to her so that that's that story To now it's my turn to answer the question of like that one scene it's the rise too because that's where i was just like damn she's a badass and she doesn't i thought you were gonna say the red pearl scene well that's what i think your favorite is you said not smutty scene. Okay, well, true. I'll give that to you. Yes, yes, but yes, and. But your specific question was not smutty scene, yes, but you also said plot device wise. Like, if this was not in the book, yeah, as as it definitely, this, you need it in the book. Scene. It's a crucial scene, I think, especially when you read it from Hawk's <laughs> point of view. But, but, but Grace, Grace, I want to hear yours. You, you, you have it like. I can't the, the, the rise. It's the rise. 
the rise because it's just like she felt like she was such a badass she knew she was going out there she was out there fucking slips like flats for people who call them flats for flats and like a nightgown and she and her friend is just like dude no don't don't go like you don't gotta go but in a way that it was just like this is normal for her to go out there it was normal and I was just like dude I fucking love her and then when he was there I'm just like okay and the fact that he didn't care that she was a woman that was out there, he admired her for her strength and the fact that she was able to hold herself up, I think was a very important thing for like a reader to read is that like Hawk wasn't viewing her as like, oh, this like fragile woman who needed to be coddled. He was like, she's an amazing murderous little creature. Like <laughs> it was like, uh, that that like what you're saying in general is so true like just like the concept of um I think it's like now I, I, I would blame it on my age but also like not not so much I'd blame it on like the expansion of like what fantasy books have become because I feel like um what's so irritating is when a powerful woman is like condensed down to her root factor of like is she gonna get the guy and so, and I think it's cool about Castile and the manner and the fact that it's like written by a woman, Obs. But um, it's not that. It's that she is a powerful woman. She's still going to go through her boy crazy phase because she's literally been kept in captivity and there's this really great guy. I mean, she's, 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 a, she's, a, she's but, still like a teenage girl, right? She's still like 19. Yeah, 19. And she's 19. She's 19. She's but, never like hung out with a no, guy. She's never hung out yeah that's true like period exclamation point she, and underline italics like she's never she's never had a friend other than tawny who works for her but what i think is cool is that like we are now seeing men who aren't like wow you're so powerful let me bring you down and humble you we are seeing men that are like wow you're so powerful you meet my energy i want to match your energy because you're so fucking amazing you know mm -hmm. what i mean I, I also yeah and that's why I think that's why I continue to read the series is because like yeah. there are like some things that are like Ugh, in the series like it's, uh, I think a lot of people are irked by when the scene where they finally have sex and and he's like remember this tomorrow and stuff and then because because like a lot of people are peeved that he didn't use his real name so it wasn't really like Here's the thing. Sensual, but here's it, it's it's his name is still Hawk. He still goes by Hawk. His mother calls him Hawk. No, but like, but like, here's the thing. When, when people do that, when people are like, "I'm DNFing it because this yeah. one occurred." Yeah. It's a fantasy fiction character. <laughs> like, yeah, it's that too. Fantasy fiction character like the rules of the world are that of people who growl and can shape shift and like it's them fucking <laughs> you know what i mean like if you wanted her to be perfect go read some like like I, really boy you know what i'm trying to say like i can get mad and call them out and be like this asshole but that's the fun <laughs> that's what drives the book forward i think a lot of people I a lot of people call out these like problematic scenes or something and like yeah there's like it's like irky but like that's what's needed to move the book forward like there has to be some scenes where it's like it's a little you're a little concerned but it's like it's not the overall plot of the book and something it's not it's yeah. just like well what would have happened would he just tell her of course not he's not gonna just tell her like she's gonna have to figure it out herself what i think it is when i think about that is that like first of all what you just said is exactly we have to look at it through the perspective of who we're actually reading about we're not reading about maggie we're not reading about grace we're reading i mean about if i was poppy i mean Man. grace is honestly poppy right now like That's look at her true. but like but there's a difference between like a scene that is problematic and then a scene about people that suck yeah that's true that's like that's fuck really exist you know what i mean so if you write about a fuck boy it doesn't mean like oh this is horrible throw it out with the fucking garbage on the next day it's like no then don't read about this like he's a fuck boy like he just everything about his character that's why he's not my personal book boyfriend he's definitely like the kind of guy that you would meet up with over a weekend oh. in europe you don't tell anyone you know what i mean like that's that kind of man i'm not trying to marry castile i'm 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 ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> I might though. <laughs> Grace, we all know Grace. <laughs> I will. I will. I will marry him, but then I will also check his ass. 
yeah. yeah. I think that's also important is that if like seeing a character check another character. So Poppy loves to check Castile and Castile loves to check Poppy as well. And I think that is a very important thing that we see in both books is that like Poppy's just like calling him out on his bullshit. Like we see in K- Flesh and Fire when, I mean, this is a spoiler, the whole episode, so I'm not going to say spoiler, but when she, the it's revealed that he was like dating like he was engaged prior and she's just like why didn't you tell me and stuff but then he's also like but I you didn't even listen to me when I tried to explain it to her to you and they both kind of check each other where she's like you're not being honest with me and he's like well you're not even trying to listen to me and that I think is very important when it comes to relationships and the fact that it is a two-way street like it's back and forth it's not you have to be honest with me and I don't give you anything in return and you both have to do it those are the kind of things that you take away from these books. It's just like, yeah, you're not taking away the actual action of him lying to her and not giving her his name and then just, you know, all the other stuff. You're not taking away that and looking for that in real life. You do not want that. You can look at the book and be like, eh, that's not okay. I do not want that. And then, you know, that's what you walk away with. But then the other stuff is, is just like Kingdom of Flesh and Fire was like a truly like relationship driven book where it was like literally them both learning about each other and then like understanding where each other's boundaries were and learning how to kind of come together and that's why I like Kingdom of Flesh and Fire a little bit more because like yeah we didn't we didn't get as much spice in that one but we did get a lot of their like emotional conversations with each other like there was this one part like like Cass was talking to her and she's like not every relationship's perfect we're not going to be happy all the time we're not going to be lovely all the time we're going to fight you're going to say some stupid shit I am too I'm going to get mad you're going to get mad at me we're going to go away for a little bit, come back together. And then we're going to be fine like that. And then it was like the most real relationship description I've ever seen in any type of fantasy book, because it was just like, that is how our relationship is supposed to go. It's not always going to be perfect. You're going to fight, you're going to argue, but you're going to learn about it. And how you come back together after the argument is what defines how your relationship is going to go forward. And it was so beautifully done and it was genuine in their story that I was just like that's what you take away don't take away the other stuff take away that that lesson right there just dropped like a big ass diamond in your lap go ahead and take that don't take away the other stuff that I mean take away the smutty scenes too get some ideas from there I mean if if a guy wants to read these and I'll give you some study material like I can't I can't I can't. No, no, no. You know how people will make videos of like, my husband reads blah, 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 or like at chapter 55, I respectfully have to keep scrolling because the the guy is never into it. They're always making fun of it or they're yeah. always laughing as they're reading it. And so then I re- like, it's kind of like, it becomes an ick for me. Mm, yeah. I can't, like un- I can't read it without that ick in my brain. So I respectfully keep moving. And so like, if a man were to read those to me and like get into it and like that's like also something they would enjoy and they weren't like mocking it as they're doing it yeah sure if not that's my side of the books i think i've seen an account like that i've seen a woman whose husband actively like reads it and stuff and he enjoys it yeah and she like she's like shows him videos he's like oh yeah i'm I'm getting on to chapter like 55 and she's like and he's like reading in bed and stuff and it's very cute and like that's, that's what i want yes that's what it's all about <laughs> like oh my god i will say i will say i will say um no there's nothing i want to say i'm just trying to manifest that just like when you think of me just please like think of me when you see things like that oh sam needs a good one i'll tag yeah. you i'll tag you um but, so we've talked about like our what crucial scenes we think for from blood of nash but what about from kingdom of flesh and fire what crucial thing or scene in this book if it didn't have it would not make it good so i actually have a bit of a of a twist on that question for me it's funny when i read a, from blood of nash and a kingdom of flesh and fire everyone kept telling me that a kingdom of flesh and fire was better um that like they liked it more i liked from blood of nash more i would say because I think that this series was meant to be multiple POV, in my personal opinion. Yes. And in, in the book too, that's why your analysis, Grace, on their relationship 
It was very beautiful because I did not see it like that when I when I first read it. Because if I had more, and obviously you as well, Maggie, it's just that particularly that the one sentence that you're bringing up of like their conversation of like, um, this is our relationship, this is how it's going to be. If I had seen Castile's POV at least like three or four times prior, I would have shipped them more. But because like I mentioned earlier, and this was kind of me like building up to what I'm going to say now. <laughs> so like, that was my little like foreshadow. You're telling me this is like such a powerful girl. She's feisty. She was on the rise. Now we're going to like lock her up in a room and like put, she's basically a captive and he doesn't really talk with her. And when he does talk with her, they're pretending and they're just like, you know, yeah. fucking. And that kind of killed the spice for me a little bit because me, I, I'm much more like the build up to the spice is my spice. So like, that's why something like Six of Crows that has no spice doesn't bother me because it's the tension that I'm like, that's what it is. You know what I mean? So Don't spoil it too much. She has only read like eight chapters of Six of Crows. I wasn't. But I know, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about because. No, yeah, it's a wine novel. It's yeah. just, it's yeah. just kids, you know what I mean? So it's like puppy love. Um, yeah. But that, that's my shit. And so like Kingdom of Flesh and Fire is kind of like, oh, I just, so to your question of, is there a scene that if this did not exist, you would have DNF the book? I would, I would reverse it and I'd say, I mean, personally, I wanted more scenes in which I saw Castile try to make Poppy feel normal rather than just the word safe, because I, I never really felt like they, um, I never really saw the relationship building. I just saw her life settling into its new form, which is like, you're with us now, you're not leaving. The only place you could go, they wanna kill you and use you, we're your best bet. I'm really sexy, I'm gonna make you come. Um, my friend is super hot and maybe if you're lucky. Yeah, so I, I, I get- <laughs> like, I hate it, but like, you know, <laughs> like, I get what you're saying and I think I definitely think this is more of like that common like transition book so this is a transition yes. where we see like at the end where they go and we we all know she's something something is gonna happen because the queen bows down to her so something is gonna happen where I think this is definitely uh like how Grace was saying this isn't really like a plot heavy book it's more of like a it's more of a like a transition book for that like in between period of her going from her normal life transitioning into what she's going to become and what is going to happen later in the series and this i think was jla's way of like just putting as much smut in a book as she could i'm telling you that like this book is kind of like a court of silver flames where yes there is some plot but it is for the sex scenes you read yeah. you reread this book to go back into the cave and have sex with castile yeah is yeah. that I do that that scene is a that's so is that you that's the scene from a kingdom of Russian fire that's like no not what, is for me. what is your scene so it's I have a couple oh <laughs> it's, yeah I well, because, because I like world expanding and I like I love world building a lot I like learning about like why the world works the way it does, who's behind it, what kind, if you have gods, okay, so what's the, what's the system, how did it happen, how did everything trickle down to what we have now, and that's what we got in Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, so we got, in, from Blood and Ash, we got like, oh, the, this is the ascension, this is what we do, this is, and then in Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, she learns this is actually how it happened, and so, those moments where Kieran and her are the question, 20 questions. Oh my god. That was it for me because when it was she, just like, when she meets his sister. That that scene when they meet his sister and they go to her house and stuff, that is my scene that I loved in the book. Like, yeah, smutty scenes are great and stuff, but I think it was like the building relationship between Poppy and Kieran in this Kieran? 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 Like, Kieran. I say Kieran because my cousin's name is Kieran and it's spelled oh, like call him Kieran because if you actually know someone with the actual name, like it's like if someone was pronouncing my name wrong and it's like, I'm gonna call you um Samantha, but 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like so Kieran. Is yes. it Kieran or Kiernan? 
Kieran. There's no it, double N, girl. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. I thought it was Kieran, but then I thought it was Kieran. So I would say Kieran, Kieran, and same thing. But their relationship? Yeah. I'm so excited. That, and that, I, I always love that in every single book. Like the 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 other friend, the best friend. The best I friend of the main relationship because like I always feel like real life jumping out real quick. Um, like if I'm if I have a significant other, I don't want to just jump into his life and then like completely wreck it. And the same thing, I don't want him to jump into my life and completely cut me off from everybody else. I want to become part of your life. I want to become and I'm, I'm cool. I like, I, I, I'm cool. Okay. I'm pretty dope with everybody. Like to the point where I can talk to you about anything you're excited about. I may not know anything about it, but, um, I can talk to you about it and I'm pretty good at making friends to a certain point. And so those moments of the girl befriending the guy's best friend is like always more endearing to me because it's just like you don't just care about him but you care about the people around him and therefore his overall life not just him because he's sexy but because of who he surrounds himself with how he carries himself with his friends what type of friends he has how that transitions into who he is and their relationship Poppy and Kieran just made me love Poppy more and love Castile more because of if Kieran has stuck by him all of this time and I have fallen in love with who Kieran is, I like you because of the friends that you have. Grace, can I just like real quick, just like vibe, um, just vibe with you real quick. Same. That's why like someone commented on one of my videos once and they pointed out that like, I always fuck with the friends more than like the main people. And it's not like anything, like I'm not trying to be hipster. It's because my number one red flag when I'm dating or anything is like, if I don't fuck with your friends, like, it, it, like it's it, like, I'm like, it's weird. Cause like, I'm the same way. Like I'm very talkative. I'm very, I'm kind of chill when I meet new people. Like I, I like conversing. So if I meet your friends and there is nothing there, like it is a dead zone whatsoever. It kind of sends to me, Cause like, I have this, this theory that like your vibe attracts your tribe. So like, if you don't fuck with my friends, then I'm gonna tell you the truth. Like, I don't have that many people that are close to me. And so of these people who've like made it to this like peak pinnacle part of my life where like, they know me better than anyone. You're just coming in and you don't fuck with them. That tells me something. And it's the same thing for me to you. It's like, and I'm being upfront with that. Like, oh, I don't think that we would work very well. And I, I've like, and I just, I, I love when, you see the best friends adopt almost in a way the main protag because that means that we're going to be a found family together and that's what you see a lot on like throne of like well that's what you just see a lot I yes had- you do see it in a lot in throne of glass because i've been okay. I was like I, I got you i picked you up i picked you up i'll take it from that point from there like yeah you see it in throne of glass and i feel like i think that's why i'm starting to love it a little bit more because now i'm not even reading right now right but i'm thinking about them i'm thinking about like she's aiden and selena and i mean selena aelin because i'm jumping books i'm jumping names and like his, rowan and his you know all of that thing and aelin's relationship with everybody but then how it trickles down into if you took her out of it yeah there would there wouldn't be as strong of a bond between other people but then how friendships can thrive without the main person there it's that that to me is world building that to me is the mark of a world of a world that's actually well built and well constructed because you've now thought about every and there's why there's some books that like i had to dnf because like it's just so clear that like that person is only there just to like serve yeah. the main tag and if then they weren't around they wouldn't they wouldn't be there and i think that like you get more kieran in a kingdom but of fashion buyer but I gotta say, to be a little bit more into my r- reasoning for like for like my favorite scene personally for me in a Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. So it's the god, it's the god tree in the mountains towards the end. Nothing even happens. It's just the promise of something happening, and I'm just like, listen. The fact I want it. <laughs> Okay, I think it's so interesting that I I totally agree with like the whole trope of like being best friends with your like the love main interests like side friend because that's like me Carly and Reese, uh, my roommate and her boyfriend. <laughs> um, but 
the fact that Poppy is like it's kind of like the chosen one trope, but not because like we still don't know what she is. Yeah. Like we have no idea, but like Cas Castile still Castile still thinks like there's something old in her blood. So something is there. And here is my theory is she's a descendant of Nikitos. Nikos. Nik Nik how Nikos. 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 Because the Flesh and Fire series is coming out. Do you know about that? No. Yeah. So is it like the side thing with like um they're doing a side thing with the gods? Yeah. That's called the Flesh and Fire series. And it's Do you want to know about that? I do. Okay. But do your listeners want to know about that? I mean, our listeners, they're going to be listening for from Blood and Ash. Oh, then fuck yeah. Tell me. What's up? Be my, be my, as long as you're not telling me, like, if you flipped the end of the book, this is how it ends. You know what I mean? Like, you do you. Uh, okay, but the people who have already gotten a crown, the crown of gilded bones in, like, the PR packages on TikTok, I am so jealous of them. I haven't like, seen any of them. I haven't seen any of the PR packages or anything like that. No, they've gotten, like, PR packages and stuff for it, and I'm like that that's jealousy as a as a total i feel it i'll embrace it yeah i'm, I'm jealous. jealous i'm jealous yeah I'm so, the book the series is about nikdos so it's basically prequeling to what filters out into from blood and ash and so we get nikdos and the spoilers for him i'm like yeah you know i liked Cass and his little sweet nothings that you get from him and his little like those things that make you go like ooh, right that looks so excited <laughs> but nikdos that man and he's a man man he's a god um <gasps> Like I could be like, he could be like a 45 year old man. And I'd be like, yeah, I would. I'd. I fucking love this like NA genre mix of fantasy where it's like, we're mature enough to get a world. Give us a fucking world, but don't fuck around right now. <laughs> Give us the scenes that are accurate, not this fucking like seven books and they held hands. You know what I mean? Like, let's get some. Let's get some. No, but um, so my next question for you is yes, you said you didn't really like the spice scenes but what is your top spicy scene out of both books so like from from blood and ash well out of both books because from blood and ash doesn't really have too many spicy scenes well i loved the spicy scenes yeah. I did. oh you did I that, like i love oh you read it for the spicy like scenes i forgot you read it for the spicy scenes. i was like i feel like i'm being so aggressive <laughs> with like my manner of what i'm like i'm like listen no i read it i read it um, but no for me Look in the first book. It's the it's the um when she's trying to go to sleep. Like and yep. he's like, let me help you. I'm gonna that, go reread that tonight. <laughs> it was just so like I love the sweet nothings. The sweet nothings are the whole thing for me. We literally and, talk about how that's really important to have. Oh and my! It's accurate. It's accurate to have in relations. But okay, sorry. Continue. Continue. Oh no 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 no. It's also like well the, let's go with that really quickly. Yeah, it's accurate and also it is like the hardest thing to write. Um because it can get cheesy so quickly yeah. and like really, like cringy really quickly and I feel like Castile I think that's why I like him so much it's because his writing she she clearly has been writing romance novels for many a year many many a year because she has fine-tuned what someone would say mm. Mm, my gosh and he's like straight up with it he's just like ain't no hiding this and and the fact that he like, yeah, people don't like how he, some people kind of throw it out there that like he groomed her basically, but she, this, the girl was curious. The girl wanted to the know. Girl, she had Miss Willa's diet. Yeah, she wanted to know before. And like, he kind of built on that curiosity to like, well, we can actually do these things. And like, you know, that aside, well, like what you're what you're saying about the the grooming thing in general, it, it kind of goes back to earlier. Like, it's a fantasy book. 
it is a fantasy yes so like uh, in in the grand spectrum of things like that is why like i can go in on this but like it's a fantasy like no one actually wants these things like if you're 14 years old and you're picking up from blood and ash i'm yeah. sorry the parental thing or that's a you thing like i've, I've I had parents ask me at barnes and noble um when i was working they asked me like do y'all have from blood and ash here i'm trying to get it for my daughter and i was like how old's your daughter and she's like oh she's like 15 and i was like um that is a very adult book ma'am i had to tell her i was like hey, like there are mature scenes in this are you wanting to get this for your dog she's like oh i had no idea like and like even red white and royal blue they asked me they're like is this meant for like teenagers and i'm like oh i didn't know that that was book was spicy oh 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 yeah red white and royal blue yeah it's the pink cover that like throws me off oh yeah no that's why it's the pink cover and like that throws a lot of parents off where i've they've asked me like where is this i'm trying to get it for like my kid and stuff and i'm like how old is your kid because it's in the adult romance section it's not my thing is like censorship is on you right so like in my my house no one really gave a fuck what i was reading but i like i never read those books and thought to myself hmm this is great you have to like so take yourself out of it for just a second and i feel like oftentimes people like to jump on those things and like to try to sound woke but like listen when things actually happen that are problematic it's obvious to everyone mm-hmm. and people talk out on it and it's a consensus mm-hmm. if you are going to go into the minutia of everything ever then i'm going to be honest with you you're one of the reasons why the entertainment industry is so difficult to sell anything in because like I can watch a Marvel movie and be like, oh, that's not exactly correct. Okay, but- literally every single Marvel character is morally gray. Like every exactly. single Marvel character is morally gray. And Except like that- Steve Rogers. Mm-hmm. Except Steve Rogers. <laughs> I don't know if you're watching Falcon and Winter Soldier, but I haven't really seen any Marvel except for Black Panther. Um get on that we we if you want you can grace and i will do a marvel watch party we can do a screener and we can invite all of our book talk friends and we can all just no do not tempt me with a good time actually i would be really no like we will do it like we can read on this but yes we can start like chronologically too oh for sure i kind of fuck with that okay okay, my arm kind of hurts now (laughs) we got the whole concept of like that so so you're, so I just wanted to like jump in on that for you because it's not like you're um, justifying grooming. Yeah. We're talking about people who are, we're talking about a man who's like 500 years old and is like the prince of a fucking place that doesn't exist and has powers. And like, she is, uh was in captivity with a bunch of vampires. Like, are we really going to sit here and talk about, it's like someone watching Dr. Doolittle and being like, no one actually talks to animals. Like, like come like, on, please. <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed that too a lot of with like the criticisms of From Blood and Ash. And I, and like, I, there's a difference between like a problematic book where the underlying themes of it are either like racist, anti Semitic, or something like that versus the fact that there are like certain scenes that maybe you don't agree with them, but it's to drive the plot. Like you can't, a lot of the times I'm like, you can't have a book that has zero problems. Like there has to be those, those weird scenes where you're like, this doesn't, this isn't right. Well, of course it's not right. That's why it's the problem. Like that's the problem with it is it's not right. Or there are characters that like are specifically made because they're going to throw a ratchet into the wheel of everything, you know? Yeah, I think there's also, like, this, I think a lot of people, like, talk about, like, oh, like, they slut shame a lot, and I'm like, well, yeah, because that's what would happen in a book, is a guy would slut shame a woman, like, it's reality is the fact that, but the character isn't letting it get to them, that's the, that's the point, is, like, a character is not going to look at that, and they're gonna be like, why are they saying this to me, I'm not that, and the character is taking that away, they're not saying, it would be different if they thought that, and then they solved the problem, but, like, that's true that happens women are constantly slut shamed in today's society it is a reflection of society a -hmm. lot of things that are happening in books even if there's some fantasy there are elements of reality in them and i think a lot of readers are like well this isn't how it should be and it's like well that's that's the thing that's like was driving the plot is there has to be a problem that reflects reality sorry i'm going on a rant i i vibe i vibe with you i vibe with you it bothers me that sometimes when they like point out these scenes and they're like oh this is a little weird and i'm like 
Yeah. That's that's the point is you're supposed to feel uncomfortable. And like Poppy even Poppy gets mad at Hawk when she finds out that he is not who he is. Like she gets mad and you're gonna discredit her he being mad him. for forgiving him and realizing that of course he's not gonna tell her because she's not going to believe him. She would never believe a random man who came to her and said, Hi, I'm the dark one. I'm here to save you from vampires. Mm-hmm. he was brainwashed her entire life of course he's gonna have to lie to her in order to i mean of course we all know he wanted to really take her away at first and then he fell in love with her but also like that's common trope of like i wanted to, i wanted to kill you at first but now i love you yeah you can't say enemies to lovers is your favorite book and then get mad when they're enemies you yeah. can't do that that's not how that's yeah. not how it works yeah, sorry about my little rant. I just, I, I get that a lot where people are like, oh, this was such a problematic scene. I'm like, no. it, it's like the driving of the plot. Like, there's a difference when it's like a constant theme throughout the book. Mm-hmm. Where That's totally different though. Like yeah, that is totally, totally different. different versus like, there's a scene that you did not like. Well, the character didn't like it. She got mad. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's my little today's rant. <laughs> Uh, this is why I'm starting a booktube I don't know if anybody's listening I started a booktube because I have rants on rants most of it is from smutty romances so stay tuned I will have it linked below but uh, yeah what was the first question what was the question before um smutty scenes oh that's right that's right do you have one? Oh, I, I do I do I, I answered that <laughs> Uh, I, I, it was the, it was the, it was the going to sleep and then it was the, the, the gods in the mountains. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So this one. Let's mine do in the first one is the, um, in the snow. Um, <laughs> Grace knew exactly. That was my favorite one was in the snow. It's the anger. I think in that scene, in the tension that why it happened, that's, <laughs> that's the scene i like in from blood and ash and then kingdom of flesh and fire it is torn between the carriage scene for me and the cave scene <laughs> you can really tell my type <laughs> by, the, by my choices of scene i was gonna say i i feel like there's like a very strong distinction because i mean i mean like everyone was like asking me when i was doing the reactions like do a separate reaction for the carriage scene do a separate reaction so like, oh fuck okay i'm gonna get to the carriage scene i get to the carriage scene i'm like bro this is like a page and i made a reaction and then i saw in the comments there was a split and i thought that was so fucking interesting and so now i'm seeing a lot i know i kind of i'm recognizing you now because there was a split there were the people like me who were like we like the build up to the moment we like to marinate and like, is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Oh my God, it's happening. And then there were the other people who were like, no, they're in the middle of a fucking battle. It's in a carriage with their enemies' ashes. Like this is a scene, you know what I mean? So it's very prime time choices. You can definitely tell who's the kinkiest of the two of us. (laughs) Oh yeah. (laughs) Well, well. (laughs) My roommate starts laughing. Um, I I think um uh, the more you get to know me, the more outspoken I am, and so, I know Grace Grace went on a rant today, and I was I was yeah. gracing Amen, and Amen was like, "Oh, I'm just taking notes," and I was like, "Oh my god," it was funny. So my favorite scenes are um the forest for sure, the forest was because it was the horseback ride oh the scene of like them getting too close to each other before in the library in the office um on the rise getting too like breath mixing but not touching yet and then the red pearl scene but him not knowing and then like in there in the forest i know who you are I know what you are. You're like uh, him saying to her, I know you're the maiden. I know that they, number one, number two, I, I know that you don't sleep well. Cause that was like, oh, okay. Okay. And it's, we, you have been feeling this way for this long. Let me just a little bit. Distract you, help you. So, 
it was all of that and, so, oh, and it wasn't even it wasn't even like them fully having sex it was that's, that's the best part of it that's the best and, part of it and the fact that the fact that he's like talking to her while doing this and just like this is, is the first time feeling anything and i'm like yeah this is it I'm fuck with you right now. Oh my god, yes. It's not just the scene. It's the fact that we read 30 chapters up to this bitch. Okay? Okay. It's the fact that a piece of paper with black ink on it made me have to put it down. Made me have to put it down and just like absorb what had happened. I think I made like a specific reaction just to that one and I ended it with like JLA's face and I was like, you did that, madam. You I'm marking the chapter in my pit book so I can go back to read it. You need to go in with some eyes. That's why when, I, when you meant the comment of like, we can see who's the kinky, I was like, no, 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 there's different. That's what I like about books. Okay, that's what I like about books is like, you see, it's a slow build to like the, like what we're all waiting for to happen. Like the thing that I like about books rather than like the movie or TV adaptations, movie, movie adaptations is that like, you only get two hours with these people. Yeah. You have to That's meet why I like them. books made into TV shows. Yeah. That's why I prefer that. Because you get to meet them, you get to experience them, you got to want to see them together. And in a movie, it's like if all of that happened in a movie, I mean, I feel like the first one would be good, the second one probably not. Um, I need to I need to want them together. And those chapters leading up, like of them getting to know each other, and the fact that he was like because it doesn't really happen till this far into the book is when anything actually really happens you have this much content and i i will say i do love the tension build the tension build is what makes this book really good that's why i like it more than the second because in the second like we've already done it and so there's yeah. technically more scenes in the second one but i don't like the ones where it's like a quickie <laughs> you know what i mean like but like in the second one my favorite scene there because I have two so I have the fourth one which is like the first I think I know which one you're gonna say which one say it then is it the one where he still has his pants on god damn it I don't remember this (laughs) am Um, I right so this is after like something and they're feeling some way and feeling frisky to help her again and they're in bed and so he's helping her release and so then he gets so worked up worked up because of that that he also and i'm just like damn boy I mean, that's your favorite scene that oh, one step. and dog you that continue got to because that one is like because it, I, i'm gonna say why that's my favorite trope that that yeah, happens <laughs> because because you we don't get to see the guy's point of view and so like that's like a physical reaction like yeah we see him getting turned on and we see him getting filled up or whatever but we don't see like the emotional kind of connection that that would have to happen in order for him to do that in order for him to finish in his pants, just by touching her, by pleasing her, by wanting her to feel this and feel it because of him is like, <sighs> you and I, man, we're something. Because like, let me tell you, like TMI personal experience, but like when you have that like physical chemistry with someone in like real life, you it's something different than like somebody who you just meet and then boom, 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 that's it. But like when you have built a relationship, when you have connected, when you have built that emotional chemistry, every act becomes so much more than just the act. It's entwined with so much. It's, yes, it's hot and sexy, but it's hot and sexy because it's you, because it's me, because it's us. And it's the fact that he takes pleasure in it being poppy he takes yeah. it, it, it's that it's poppy it's that it's somebody that he cares about and the fact that she's able to do that to him the power the, the power, power she has like oh that oh, scene, it, that's it, why it's you like always talk about that scene grace you always talk about I, that scene I do, I do. but that that that's not the only one 
the is other it? one is like the cave scene because oh, you've had so much like, yeah but it's not just because like it's a hot scene but it's because like because of the build-up because of like the whole we're pretending we're faking it we're not gonna be real we're not gonna be this we're not gonna it's just pretend we're just doing it for face but there it was just them there they have learned about each other more they have dealt with each other more and they're like no this is this is us this is us happening because it's you because it's me that's my favorite sex scene because those things that's that's actually very very beautiful i'll be i'll be i'll be real i kind of like listening to you dissect why you like these scenes is making me wish i had like is making me like them more if that makes any sense grace is very good at that grace is very eloquent when she speaks about sex scenes yes it's gorgeous because like i just was so sick of hearing poppy's in her monologue that when these like when these scenes came up i was like yeah fuck yeah but like i think i needed more beats along the way of plot to get me out of it because because she was always thinking about castile and like the does he like me does he not it was starting to bother me Mm -hmm. but that's a classic thing for a girl who has never met a man a hundred percent i'm with you like like, it's it's make it's true i'm fucking 25 and i think like that sometimes you know what i mean so i'm totally with it but i i wouldn't want to read my own you know what i mean like yeah that's why i'm like damn i would have this book would have just if it was multiple pov oh my gosh if it were multiple POVs and I got his point of view, but then I also feel like, uh, because if you got his point of view, you'd be like, girl, he fucking loves you. He loves you. And he's just not saying it because he thinks that you're not going to love him back. And of course, like, you know, looking at this out of the story, you're like, yeah, that's there. But to read about him doing it, but that would be so perfect that would make it even more annoying that like you're like you can see his point of view and you're like he loves you and it would make you hate poppy or not hate her but you would be so annoyed and you would be rooting for it even more because you're like you see exactly. both point of views and you're like yes poppy yes he likes you but then when she's like no he doesn't you're like you want to like yeah. throw your book and that's like that's what an author wants an author wants that from you they want you to like especially from blood and ash there are those points where like you're reading and you're just like and you read pop something poppy says and you're just like what the fuck like you're like why is she saying that but like that's the point is the off like jla does so well with making poppy yes she's annoying at points but also she's she's young Young. she's honest for her the only reason it's annoying is because she's literally in a room locked up all day there's not much else to think reminds us of ourselves at that age and that's what's scary is you're like wait i used to do that i don't like being called out because i used to be boy obsessed well that's like that's like a thing too psychologically speaking like like psychologically speaking (laughs) like i've seen that like i've seen that a lot where it's like if if you like really don't fuck with something and you have no reason why it probably is because it's reflecting something in yourself that you don't like and that's why it's a big ick right off the bat and so boy crazy girl who's actually super powerful and then should think about like what she is pissed me off because i was like oh my god no <laughs> like how many times have i gone to psychics and be like does he like me <laughs> like you know what i mean like fuck off like go do the thing you have to do like uh, the board who am i gonna marry when i grow up <laughs> oh my god i did that uh, that's and it, that's the thing about this like this story it's just like you gotta realize like you are not meant to like completely agree with her all the time you're meant to be like girl that was not it uh no and that's what we're, supposed to do. we're supposed to do that we're supposed to do that as readers we're supposed to be like eh, no great but no not that and like the whole way that like everything started happening in kingdom of flesh and fire and then like meeting everybody else and then like her still thinking like worrying and second guessing but him saying like trying to show her but not showing her it was like dude the both of you i literally want to slap the shit out of both of you yeah man but what i will say i like what you're describing it as earlier that it is a transition book because now she's got the guy and now that she's like coming to her powers, now with the end of this book, she like has all the woven attached to her for some fucking reason. 
the Wait, queen have you read the first three chapters what have you read the first chapter no, i have not i have not because I, i'm so fucking busy did you read the first chapter back in the, the first, first chapter okay you have okay i've only read the first chapter because a lot of people read the third like the like the first three chapters and they it's were like to do list it's literally in my fucking to do list read the fucking first three chapters i'm not going to i'm not going to because <laughs> i don't a lot of people were like I wish I hadn't. And then some people were like, well, I need more now. And I'm like, I can't do that to myself personally. Like even reading the first chapter, I was like, like it ended off good where it's like, it still kind of like doesn't give you anything. So you're not like trying to read the next chapter versus like, where if I read like three chapters, I'm already hooked in. So yes. I need it now. And I don't think my brain would be able to comprehend that. Like, hey, you gotta wait two weeks. I'd be like, bitch, please. I need I this now. Start I don't want to start off the new book with a reread of what happened. Like, I want to go in fresh, you know what yes. I mean? Like, and I'm already like, and the thing is that sucks. Like, I know a lot of people can like read multiple different books at the same time. I'm not one of those people. Like if I'm checked in, like right now I'm in the Grishaverse, right? So like, there's no smut in the Grishaverse. So like, that's, that's not, that's more just- It's a YA. Yeah. It's a YA. It's just, it's a YA. So I'm not going to go from a YA into an NA and then back again. Like that just would be so weird to me. Cause like, I'm in a place because I'll be honest I I will say this I I now try to like pace myself like space it out in the book club like this where like I went from Throne of Glass that's not really smutty to Crescent City that has a little bit of something something and then I had like um and then I went right into From Blood and Ash and so I went from Crescent City from Blood and Ash and I was kind of like at a certain point a part of me was like craving more plot than like sex mm -hmm. um if that makes any sense I was kind of like I'm worried about myself because I was literally finishing from London Ash and I was like, I want the joining. <laughs> I want the joining today. And so I was like, no, what you need is a glass of water and a prayer to Jesus. Because like, well, so in the first like, chapter, like Heidi LaRue where there's no sex, <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> chill, you need to, you need to chill. Cut, sit down, breathe, breathe look away that's what you need you need to look so away I did, and now I'm, I'm here again i'm gucci okay i'm fine i read shadow and bone nothing awesome i'm reading crescent six of crows because i've now taken a pause every little minutia to me is like oh my god but yeah. if i had driven off right off hot from blood and ash like that would have been like i do think like how basically what i'm trying to say is like i agree with you and not reading those chapters because i think how you enter a book perceive is how you're going to perceive it and so there, there are some books like i'll like i raved over six of crows and people were like oh i fucking hated it that's so weird and then i talked to them about like when they got into it or from what a nash for that matter or like a kingdom of flesh and fire for that matter listen to the way that you describe some of the scenes and i'm like oh fuck i didn't think about it like that i kind of wish i had gone into it the way that you went into it. i'm like damn you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. for sure because like there are certain things that you go into like a book and you're just like yeah it was okay but then as soon as you start talking to somebody it's just like oh yeah that you're right that's so true yeah. that's you know? why i like watching your videos is because that's why because i was like oh i never thought of it that's why when like what i said earlier is like if somebody doesn't like a book there's probably a reason why they didn't like it and it's nothing on you but don't also don't also don't attack somebody if they like a book and you don't like it yeah yeah like a lot of people like hate on like Akatar and like that it's like a badly written book, but like some people aren't looking for that amazing world building. Like when I read Akatar, I had no like I was not I read I read Throne of Glass, Akatar, Crescent City, and I had no like literary like I was like I was not reading it for I was reading it for pure enjoyment. I was like, is this gonna make me happy? I was not trying to analyze anything. No. I read I read Akatar for just to enjoy. That's the yeah. only reason why I read it. Mm -hmm. I, I will say I, I I am really grateful about one thing because I hear about that on Book Talk all the time. I I'm knock on wood, the hate comments I receive are few and far between. Oh. And when I get them, like they're like I got one DM that was like, I didn't post for a week because this DM was so heinous. Um, but I then I like realized I was like, just delete it. You know what? if someone is like basically I started framing it in my mind differently I was like I really feel bad for that person I wonder what's going on in their day I hope they're doing okay like what happened like there's got to be some kind of backstory why like you went out of your way to bring me down when I didn't do anything to you nor did I say anything you know what I mean it was just kind of like 
it was absurd to me so the, the I'm really lucky that like I'm not really on that side of TikTok I'd say I follow a lot of people who are very intelligent who like are more keyed in on like things that actually transpire that are are noteworthy mm-hmm. and I I listen I learn I adjust accordingly to what I think ben, like is best for me as a person and what is beneficial to the people around me um I'm never going to hate on anyone for what they're reading. I'm never going to, I'm not going to like um, yuck your yum. Um, if you love something, guess what? Frame your response in a way that's conducive to the other person. It's probably my like least favorite trait. And I am going to like be, a, I'm going to talk about astrology real quick. Like I think it, like, I, like I, there are certain things that I notice that I'm like, I'm for sure a Libra. Cause like there are like so, social cues are really important to me. So like, like, so if, if let's say for example I say I like Taylor Swift and then someone's like oh I don't like her at all it's like well you didn't need to say it like that you could yeah. have just been like not for me so yeah. like someone, I meet someone they're like I like I'm really good friends with Maggie maybe reading right mm-hmm. she loves loves JLA and she was so worried that like when we did our live together that I, I didn't because she knew I didn't like I didn't give a five star to from Blood and Ash and I was like no, Maggie, just because I didn't give a five star to it doesn't mean I didn't have like a hella good time reading it. And it's not like I'm going to come on here and like trash your favorite book. I had a really good time. It's just that I can articulate a dislike for something without attacking someone. And you can still like it. There can exactly. be points that you like and then points that you yeah. dislike. Also, like I only rate books five star if I read them in a full day. That's like my... But I'm gonna be honest, that is some Marvel superpower you got going on there. That is like, that's crazy. That's amazing. Ooh, that is amazing. Like, I just read They Both Die in the End, and I like read it in a day. More like like six hours, really, based on like, yeah. You recommend? You recommend? Oh, if you wanna cry, yeah. If you wanna cry, I like it. <laughs> okay, so are you, so you're into astrology and stuff. Can you guess our signs? So can you guess Grace and Mai's signs? I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. <laughs> Grace is a Taurus. She is. That's fucking funny. I was a guess. <laughs> to be fair, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier in this podcast, I did say my birthday was coming out. I did not remember that though. <laughs> I just genuinely, I don't know why, everything it's on me was like, that's a Taurus. Okay. Okay. I like it though. I like it. That, wait. So I am correct. Yes. You are. That's dope as fuck. Okay. Let me get this wrong. Um, <laughs> I've got like three in my head. What's your okay? Rank the three. No. 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 I want to do it like I did for, for Grace, okay. and, then I, and then I'll do. But it's so 50 50 split for me right now. <laughs> it's only him. It was like. You're what? You're a Pisces. No. Are you an Aquarius? Yes. Ah! That was the 50 50 split! Oh my god! So perfect! Aquarius, Aquarius, Aquarius! Oh! Insane. So, what tells you that I'm a Taurus? I don't know. You're just real chill. I appreciate that. You just were really chill. I don't know. And that's just kind of the vibe that I got. And then I got the Aquarius because purple hair, very <laughs> lovely, very decorative space, walls, room. And I don't know, you were just like very like, um like you kind of remind me of Luna Love, but just like a little bit. Uh, wait, if you didn't know I was a Libra, what would you, what would you think I am? Well, fuck, it's kind of hard. Cause I, I only but, think of you as Libra. So I, I don't know. Um, I think I am for sure. Like I'll I'll say things in my day to day life. I'm like I I yeah. I'm a I'm a cusp, but I'm yeah. I'm a Libra. I don't know because like what you know, it's crazy. You know, it's crazy. Is that like I'm just at the beginning of a Taurus. So the fact that you got it so well and so like automatic. Props to you. I just want to give you that little like yeah. I'm a dance. <laughs> what, what, what dates are Pisces too? I have no idea. Let me look it up because Pis- it's Pisces and Aquarius, right? I don't know. I think so. Let me I look actually am not into zodiacs that much, but mm-hmm. lately I have been getting them pop up so much on my page. Like, um, we did this. There was this video that was just like every friend group has, um, the air sign that um that wants to. Let me look it up. Okay, I can that, check my group chat. That 
like it like it's so into their own feelings or something like that and then Here, it's do you want to play it? sign yeah play it play the sound because okay, me... the sound does it better than i do please see it is every friend group has fire sign with no volume control earth sign that's kind of a hoe but you know what we appreciate her air sign slowly being consumed by their own dreadful thoughts and water sign waiting to kill all of us <laughs> And so I saw that and like, it was funny because like literally like a couple hours before I saw that video, I was like going like full sex talk to like Maggie and like a couple of other people. And I was just like, dude, man, I'd let him do this and this and breakfast, lunch. And, and I was going in and then like a couple of hours later, I saw the video and I was like, oh, oh. yeah. Um, what today? No, this was like another conversation a little bit before that video. Oh, because we were on, we were FaceTiming. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when the conversation was. Yeah, it was crazy. So lately, I've been seeing a lot of them, and I'm just like, well, then this is interesting, and it fits so well. Because like before, I just never really paid attention, but now I'm just like, oh, maybe I should. It's weird how oddly like people actually are like to their signs. Like the fact that you could guess I'm an Aquarius just based on my personality. And like, yeah, I said my birthday I just turned 20. So you wouldn't really again, these like tidbit facts I did I do not yeah. recall. Like you did say just turned 20, but homie, it's April. Like you could have turned 20 at any point. That's true. <laughs> Dude, December was like yesterday. It feels like that. Dude, it feels last- like we just started this yesterday. Okay. So to kind of starting clo- closing, because we've been on this for a while. Thoughts, three point thoughts on what's going to happen in the next book. I Go. think Poppy is a god or a descendant of a god. I think like she's reincarnated. I think that's like what the chosen one is. Um, I think that her mother is the queen personally. Okay. And I think there's going to be some kind of plot twist. Oh, in some- an incest but- plot twist? No, 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 no. I think that like you know how they say like oh, she's queen. like like the the vampires. Oh okay, okay. I thought you meant the yeah. ascended. The okay. queen of the ascended. You know they constantly say that like she's related to her. That's what I thought. I, I think that she's like her grandmother. I truly think that to be the case. I but I also think like that's the low hanging fruit theory. Wait, I thought that was already established that like that like her that mom was they- like at it like a lot but no one's actually said yes luke i am your father you oh. know what I'm trying to say? it was implied but i think it is heavily implied. Yeah. yeah like yeah. um th- what's her name the duchess says it but it's kind of like yeah. is that true or are you just being a bit? I think. Yeah. by but the way her killing her, her killing her by the way quick bit yeah yes fuck with it okay your third your third thing your third thing Alistair is not a wolven and i think alistair is definitely involved with killing her family but i think alistair is like a much older creature i don't think he's wolven because why else would he have not reacted you know he didn't he's the one who doesn't react every other wolven is like automatically bonded you know what i mean like so i have they all break their bonds with yeah all the Atlanteans, they all break their bonds and are. So I have a theory to that. Oh, yay. Okay, cool. <laughs> to tidbit on to like Alistair not reacting. So earlier on, um, somebody in the Facebook group brought this up to my attention again. And they said, like, I think that Alistair had a thing with the queen, with the Al- Atlantean queen, because like, just like the vibe right there right and I was just like I will neither confirm or deny that I also agree or may not because he was bonded to the king who um did the ascending like made the ascended yes forgetting his name but that king he was bonded to that king he broke his bond to that king out of loyalty to the queen, right? And so now bringing that theory into this of the wolven not react, him not reacting to the bonds being broken is because he already did something in himself by breaking his bond to his person, even though his person was still alive and still well. 
but because he willing, willingly did it. And it must've been really hard because it's like this deep connection. And for him to have to go into himself and break that bond willingly of his own self, I think it kind of like broke the switch kind of to say. And so therefore it will not work for anybody else. Oh, ooh, that's, that's, my, that's my thing. That's my thing that, that may be we, why it happens the way that it does, that he cannot be bonded to anybody else. And I feel like that's sort of like a punishment because the Wolven are bonded to Atlanteans because they're meant to help protect them. They are sacred. The Wolven are sacred. They're not lesser. They're they're equals. They're probably higher, honestly, if you think about it. Are, because like, they weren't even supposed to protect the Atlanteans. They were supposed to protect the deities. But because the deities were gone, they started protecting the Atlanteans. So the Wolven are technically a little bit higher, though nobody is really thinking about it that way. But since readers he, don't even catch that either i think a lot of readers a lot of people are like oh they view like as like that they're kind of slaves yeah not that's not how it is slaves i viewed them as like like um it's a partnership well i viewed it no i viewed it as more as like um have you seen pandora like have you seen avatar yeah, yeah. oh and pandora there's like the big thing and there's like a ride for at Disney World about this. It's like there's a big thing that when you come of age, um, you ride this creature and dragon. You can, you can say it. It's it, 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 it's, it's a dragon. Okay. It's, it's like they're not spoiling ride. Avatar. And okay, it's like that's I fuck with it. It's my favorite ride at Disney World because of this. But anyways, it's like basically like they connect via like their their hair, right? But but the point of that is like, it's a sacred moment. And so it's not that they're above or below, it's that we are all members of this world together. And for some reason through the cosmic design, we are like chemically linked to be together and to work together. And if you fall, I fall type of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how I saw it more. It was like, it wasn't, it was less like conscious and it was more like, like soul matey, if that makes any sense, um, but yeah. I totally get that. And I completely agree with that because it's just like the women have so much more uh, capabilities than from what we've seen so far of the Atlanteans. The Atlanteans are just Atlanteans. They have no, yeah, they can hear, they can smell, they are strong. They have to drink blood. That's it. The woven can strong smell. See their eyes? Can we talk about their eyes? Their eyes are freaking amazing. Okay. And they can transform. Yeah. And and on top of that, the Wolven can kill Atlanteans. Yeah. The Atlanteans can't really be hurt by anything else, but the Wolven can. And that's if just you think about it. The Atlanteans are just like the children that the wolves were just like they're like, well, there's nothing else better to do, so we might as well protect these these little babies. <laughs> Whoa, you I you really shaped my perspective on this. I like this. You know, this nice. I kind of think of it like um Mowgli. Yes, yes. <laughs> they kind of like adopted the Atlanteans. They're just like fine, I guess. They're just like they're just like, well, you're not gods, but you're still better than humans, so we might as well help you. I like it. I like this a lot okay grace i'll be honest your theory is pretty dope i'm not gonna lie like that's pretty dope like the concept of like him being punished yeah I think that ability to bond yeah. because it's like this thing of like it's like a gift to be bonded to somebody to have that connection with somebody who understands everything about you and it's like a gift to you and to him like you know the two of you and because you willingly broke a sacred bond between you two you're punished you for the rest of now life. yeah you're not forced to walk the earth well not being able to bond with anyone my else. question is this so poppy obviously breaks all the bonds and stuff but they still like there's some connection it, do they are they all rebonded to her now or is that what it was is that they all bonded yeah. to her okay because that's what i was missing because i was like yeah I, well, because I, okay, I've read the chapter, like, when it dropped, so that was, like, four months ago. <laughs> same, same. No, but the, well, the, like, basically, the thing is, like, they are, they would kill for her, like, like, yeah. Kira would kill Castile mm. if he, like, okay, that scene, that she was so fire, oh my god. <laughs> when she had to rein in Kieran, and, 
but like Castile was not afraid. Castile trusted her and was like, he, he was ready to like lay his life on the line for her. And I was like, I appreciate that. I appreciate <laughs> And it, oh my God, it's just cool. I don't know. It really was. It was, it was really cool. Yeah. The fan art for it too is really cool. The scene that um, in the book club, the, you know, the scene of her on this, we will send it to you, Sam. We'll send it to you. Thank Thank you. you. Um, We'll send it. DMs with everything I need to see. That'd be very kind. Yes, of course. I remember like when you were like reading it and I first asked you about the podcast and then like I was just like have you read this chapter let me send it to you real quick and I you're like, the reason I got that I love you <laughs> yes. you got me because I was like I don't have that and you're like girl you're <laughs> like I was like for sure because like <laughs> it's always those little scenes and like you know the whole like ending scene of and the first chapter of the next book it's so insane because it's like you think, yeah, it's like this chem- this animalistic thing, or I don't know what you, what you call it, but it's this magical bond, right, to all the woven or whatever. But Kieran was right next to her. He stepped right in front. And it's something about like, you know, the best friend always like choosing the, the girl over his his best friend because like his best friend is about to cross the line and it makes me think of like those tiktok videos of like oh we're testing my my best our best friend's loyalty and the girl gets up to go to the pump gas or no to the to get something from the store or whatever and the guy pulls up his phone is just like oh yeah i'll come through later baby and like pretending to cheat or something right and the guy best friend is in the back and he's listening to this and there's so many videos of how different, but the yeah. way that I picture it is like Kieran is in the backseat, Castile's doing this thing, Poppy's going to get that, Poppy comes back and Kieran's like, girl, let me tell you what this food did. He's over here. And that's literally how I picture the scene of the steps of him stepping up and being like, back the fuck up. You do not get close to her. And the that's why I love the best friend and the significant other friendship because it's just like, yeah comes into play later on and I love that I love the bond I love the friendship yeah well it's late um it is 11 p.m where I'm from oh my, my room is in bed um yeah so I'm in central time um and Grace is in Pacific, uh PST so yeah she's two hours behind well this was very fun <laughs> no but actually no joke like this was a lot of fun like I've I've I'm very, 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 I was very flattered when you asked me specifically for this episode. I don't know why. I was just very like, oh, fuck, that fandom's so big. Like, that's really sweet that, like, you picked, like, me for that book. That was like, whoa. Um, And, like, I had, I think, the most fun making those videos. Now I'm having a lot of fun making Six of Crows videos, but since, since then... So it really means a lot to me that you asked me to do this. So thank you so much, ladies. Thank oh, you. yes. Well, thank you for coming on. Cause like we were, we are always nervous when I, I'm very nervous when I email, when I send out emails and stuff as like a formal, I always do formal requests. Like even if we DM and stuff, I always send out like a formal email just so that I have a record and stuff. And I always get so nervous because nobody has said no, but it always scares the, me that like somebody's going to be like, no, I don't want to be on your podcast. And I'm like, oh I'm so nervous but everybody has reluctantly been like well uh, yeah of course I've been hearing about it I want to I want to be on and I'm like yeah. heard about us like yeah. what like I was talking with Eamon and she was saying like they're in a group chat and like they were like yeah we want to like be on your the podcast and stuff and like they were like Eamon's lucky she's been on it and I was like yeah it's like what <laughs> but from this perspective you are two ladies who are assembling an online community of books and as you sit together you think to yourselves who do we want to speak with about that book then we're just people that are making content on the internet and two people are like hey person I've never met before would you like to come in and talk to us like personally one-on-one like two-on-one um conversation about a book for people to listen into because they think we think it'd be entertaining do you understand how flattering that is Anyone who says no is a douche. Like, it's a douche magoosh. And like, well, how's, or maybe has like a reason. You know what I mean? Maybe they just like, you know, 
<laughs> no, I don't get it. They're douche magooshes. But like, so yeah, get no, get that out of your head. Don't, don't, no, no, no. It's it's nice. It's a nice thing. It's like it's it's like getting invited to a birthday party, you know? Yeah, we that's why we I always tell guests that's why we created the podcast was it feels like friends talking and yeah. chatting and it, we wanted it to feel like that and like that's why when we warned you about like the smiling and stuff is because like it ends up like it ends up just being like a chat like you forget we're even recording yeah and so, this is my first meeting you guys like in person you know what I mean like or like at least online in person whatever because like like I like I said like like I already have like very nice memories with both of you like one of you has like seen my videos in the very beginning the other one that's like sent me shit in my dms and I'm like <laughs> so now I don't know I'm really into that like now like I, I write letters with people and stuff like that and pen pals and stuff like that so like I get really excited when I see certain usernames pop up in anything and so it's really a blessing to like be able to meet each other you know what I mean yes well thank you for coming on thank you for everybody who's listened to this long episode um I hope that quick I want to show you uh, I want to show Sam something real quick I want to well, show her for the episode yeah Oh, okay. YouTube listeners too. They YouTube get to listeners see. can. So because I've been in Poppy cosplay, I have my contacts in. I do my scars, whatever. I also want to show Sam this because I feel like she'll appreciate it. So because I was tying together my whole Poppy cosplay for a while, um, I decided to get myself this. Shut up! Shut up! Dagger. Oh and my god! So it has like a little wolf on it. And like the handle before it was like all like blue or whatever, but I like painted it to be like bone. And my last final step would be making this red to be like the full woven bone blood dagger. And I just felt like you would very That's much appreciate fire. That shit is fire. I'm not gonna lie. That is amazing. Wow. So. I'm very honored that you showed that to me. Yeah. because I would put that on display on my wall like right by my desk like like you know those little like um like um <laughs> it, it sits right there on your desk yeah that's... dude that's sick okay cool Grace's <laughs> poppy cosplay is really good she has a lot of outfits for it oh yeah I I, I got it all, all you did the hair she dyed her hair red for this yeah. If this dyed dyed like you dyed yeah, it it's she dyes it she goes to like a professional and gets it done yeah. she's yeah. bullheaded this is this is me this is all me homie i love your commitment damn like wow when we say commitment it's commitment <laughs> yeah but you look damn good so i will say that now you know that you look great as a redhead <laughs> but okay. thank you in general for um, having me on yes thank you thank you for everybody who's <laughs> listened to this far um youtube listeners there will be bloopers at the very end of this so you will be getting a little bit of what happened before we tried to start um so thank you guys so much for listening and we'll see you um next week for next week episode we have tish um the bookish the book thief 28 on um tiktok um we're so excited to have her on um is there anything you need to wrap this up with um grace anything we need to say no um nope. nothing great well we'll see you next week and have a good evening we'll see you later bye stop <laughs> the other episode okay here we go here we go yeah, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. what do i do do i just sit here can y'all hear me sit there and smile that's all you have to do oh okay there we go sorry by the podcast the episode one just started playing through my airpods and i got so scared <laughs> or like first okay i'm gonna turn off all of my bluetooth for my airpods okay oh oh we're starting <laughs> sorry <laughs> Okay, okay, we'll just, Sam and I are just going to be here, like, okay, it's episode 21. Whoa, 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 you're starting this, and then I'm just going to pop open. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm dumping this on you. Did <laughs> I start last episode, though? No, you didn't. It's totally fine if you start this one. Okay, you have to do the next two. Okay, for sure. Go, man! Oh.
sorry. I don't know what to say. I'm nervous. It's, <laughs> it's like episode 21. 21. Wow. I know. Well, because like we put three Aka. Aka Sif ones. ones. Mm-hmm. That was a long thing. Okay. 21. 21. Blood and Ash. Our FBAA and KOFA. F. I think that's longer than actually saying the name. Yeah, Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I'm nervous, but okay. I will go. I don't know why I'm so nervous for this one. It's fine. Okay. You got this. Okay. <laughs> this is going at the end of the YouTube episode. We're just going to have a blooper. For oh, sure. <laughs> I'm just sitting here. <laughs> Like, I'm in it. Like, she's popping out. I'm all pissed off. No one told me so I could be Castile. <laughs> I should have told you. That would have been perfect. You know, I, I am kidding. We could have been, been, been all three of them. We could have been Kieran, Castile, and Poppy. I could have rolled up with, like, a bowl of honeydew and just, like, <laughs> been doing my thing. I was at Walmart today. <laughs> Don't even, because we would, I would, girl. <laughs> Don't <laughs> tempt us. <laughs> we're, we're, so we're, 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 what we're hearing is you need to come for our Crown of Gilded Bones episode is what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. Okay. Do you want me to start? I'll start it. Yeah, can you start it? I'm just, I don't know. Okay. What's this? I, was, I was already planning for you to start it, so I was like, not thinking about it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Wait, wait, fix your veil a little bit. Well, because I can't see where I'm. It, it it's fine like this. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Okay, ready? Here we go. Hey guys, welcome back. <laughs> no, no, no! Don't do that. Why did you look at me like that? <laughs> you looked so good. Looked so good. I'm sorry. I was not prepared for that. You know what? You know what? Okay, you own it. You look amazing. It off. Okay, I, I will try to keep calm. Take two. Here we go. This is going at the end. Bro! Those are... <laughs> One, two, 